Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the very first week of Runeterra Academy's tournament series. We're actually, are we calling it an amateur league now? Abso, I think we are. How are you doing this tonight, Abso? Amateur league. This is 100% the league to be a part of, all right? Runeterra Academy is the greatest league to bless uh, our community, hands down, hands down, all right? We, the team-based gameplay, I'm excited for it. Yes, it is honestly great. It's a different format from any other tournament you guys have seen. It's amazing. These guys are the best people that have ever come in. But for those of you who... Sorry, this is Aegis. It's Aegis now. They've rebranded. I apologize. We're with Aegis Esports. I, uh... Rutera Academy is the Twitter account that we were fo that I tweeted out because that's where we're at. But anyways, scuff stream from the start. For those of you who don't know, I'm Monte Cristo. I'm joined here by Absolution on that side. On that Hi. side. I'm Absolution. If you don't know me, you're wrong. And we're so happy to be bringing you guys all the action tonight. It's uh, it's going to be a jam-packed game. The uh, Sorry, it's going to be a jam-packed evening full of action. We have, first up, we have Beautiful Gamers against Hydra White. These are some of the best players in the game right now. We're talking about What Am I, Henneke, Cephalopod. All three of these players on Beautiful Gamers have made top cuts in seasonals. They've all top cut various grassroots tournaments. If you haven't heard of them, well, you've been living under a rock. And then from the other side of Hydra, we have Black Boss, Kevin LOR, and Macon Jackson. Absol, how are you feeling about this matchup? Are you like excited to see these players get into it? I'm yeah. really, really hyped. I am uh, I'm a, I'm a bit of a what am I fanboy ever since the days of the the creation of Viego kegs. So I'm not going to lie, 100% have a bit of a bias going into this, but it is going to be a tough match, right? I mean, on beautiful gamer side, we have some amazingly skilled tournament players, and on Hydra white side, we have some also amazingly talented players, right? I mean, Cephalopod has an insane tournament record, and then you have players like like Black Boss who's bringing weird decks to a massive tournament like this, and the only thing you can think of when players of that skill bring that type of deck is how did you think of this and what in it works? Because it clearly is something that no one is going to see coming. I mean, uh, the, his, uh, the, uh, the least Kindred Hecarim list that I see on my screen here is crazy. And then you bring in uh, players like, what am I playing Go Hard, bringing back TF Go Hard, right? Which is yeah. something that is, everyone thought has been long dead and he's bringing it back. This is just going to be insane games. Not only is he bringing it back, he actually gave it to his teammate Kevor to win Fight Night with earlier this week. So it's it's proven that it, it is a force to be reckoned with in this metagame. And as you said, the Brazilian's Black Boss has brought out this amazing deck that I've never seen the likes of before. We're talking about harrowing Hecarim here. Like, who who would have expected this for the first week? We I can't wait to get into this. I hope we get to catch those games on the stream. We'll see if we don't. The other players have all brought some amazing stuff as well. This is Absolutely. definitely going to be a great evening of Legends of Runeterra. I mean, we even, uh, I see uh, My Micah, Meka. I don't, I don't want to butcher your name there. Uh, but Meka's brought a Tribeam list. And Tribeam has been one of my personal favorite decks I've been learning. Uh, a lot of very good, like, skill-intensive decision-making. And it can be very punishing into decks. Uh, it, with the slightest misplay, that one Tribeam comes down. And suddenly, now you're, you lost a unit. And you're dealing with something that is very scary. Uh, Zoe Aphelios Victor on the same lineup. I mean, that's a, a really strong deck. Created cards are not to be slept on anymore. Uh, things like Yumi Pantheon Tar. Once again, very strong deck. Victor Vi, Chef's Kiss, perfection of card gaming. And then we have uh, Akshan Sivir, one of my personal favorites. One of the decks I can play so well because Akshan says my name in his level up, and therefore I got to give the edge to Akshan there. Uh, yeah, just honestly, st really strong lineups is what I'm, what I'm getting at there. Really, really strong lineups from all these teams. Yeah, some very creative lineups, some very different stuff. It's not the pure black and white metagame stuff we've been seeing. Even Black Boss has even brought Diana Aphelios. We've been seeing some of the Zoe with that pairing in Noxus, but this time he's chosen Diana. I guess he wants more interaction with a challenger. Just felt it was a better option there. Yeah, I mean, in, in tournament play, right, when we're looking at ladder versus tournament, you have this best of three format. You're not just building a deck, you're building three decks, and that gives you a lot of freedom. You can essentially look at it as playing with you know uh, 120 cards instead of just 40. So the choices you make are going to be significantly different, and you may go for a deck that might be less good in a ladder format where you only have 40 cards, but is significantly better when you have the flexibility to put it into certain things. 
absolutely. And it looks like what we do have our uh, our first matchup here is going to be what am I up against? Make it, make it. So we'll uh, take a look at these deck lists. I think is what we're going to get into. Oh, the, we've got uh, bands coming up. Yes. Yeah. Why don't? Yeah, let's let's take a look. At, absolutely. Do you want to break down these deck lists a little bit yeah, first? Yeah, absolutely. I would be more than welcome or more than happy to provide some deck highlights. Uh, sponsored by Runeterra AR, a great place to look at decks and cards. Um, w we have a classic go hard here. You know what this does already. You have kegs to help boost the damage of a lot of your spells. You have TF to help you keep board control. Less of a champion in this and more of a spell in a way to look, is a, way, a good way to look at it. It's a slow and steady wins the race kind of deck, but we have a bit of a twist with the Catalog of Regrets here. Uh, Catalog of Regrets is probably one of the standout cards in this list for me because it helps so much with go hard right you are basically creating an extra go hard potentially every single turn after it comes down and that's just going to uh, exponentially boost the amount of go hards that are in your deck and then beyond that piercing darkness a one of splash very strong card for maintaining your health keeping you up and it's very underrated deal five is a lot yeah what am I is very fond of this card. He has been bringing it in all his SI control decks as a one of. Uh, interestingly enough, his decks always seem to end up on 30 fo 35 points of healing. I know this because I counted it out to make a ban in a tournament one time, and all three of them were on 35 points of healing. I asked him about it afterwards. Turns out it's a coincidence, but maybe there's something worth noting there for any aspiring deck builders. As you mentioned, Abso, the Catalog of Regrets is going to be so powerful in this uh, in this archetype, letting you expedite that go-hard flip. We saw Kevor put it to good use earlier this week in Fight Night, as I already mentioned. And if you really want to think about it, the Catalog of Regrets, uh, if you put it down on turn four, and let's say the game runs to turn eight, and you cast a go-hard with it every turn, you are essentially getting uh, eight free copies of go-hard in your deck. And that exponentially grows outwards, right? So it's a very, very strong card for a GoHard. I have personally have, have suffered at the hands of GoHard catalog. Yeah, and then the one other thing I wanted to touch on in this list is the one of Gangplank along with the Dreadway for the top end. Mm -hmm. And this is just really, really cool because you're effectively playing two Gangplanks in this, right? Mm -hmm. You don't... What am I has decided that he doesn't need the full set. It's just an a good occasional alternate finisher that might sometimes help you out. And... You don't really need the full set of Elise either, right? This Go Hard deck isn't quite like the Go Hard deck of old, where you could play for that super aggro opener. You do get that aggro chip damage. You take about, you get, you try to get about 15 damage in with your fearsome units, and then just finish them off with the Go Hard. But you can usually end up playing a lot slower. So Elise is not super necessary like she was. Not the super powerhouse card she was back in the olden days either. Exactly. And I mean, we do have uh, this deck that we're facing off against here. What am I going to be facing off against? One of the standout decks over on... Uh, who is he Who's he playing into again? He's, he, we got uh, notified that he's going to play into Macon Jackson for oh, round Jackson. one okay. here. Maka S. Make, make a, <laughs> I'm definitely... <laughs> My apologies on that one. I thought Sorry he was playing it. off against Black Boss. But um, we do have another standout deck on the other side, though, with Black Boss's uh, least yeah. Kinder Packer. I mentioned this earlier. And I think it's another just standout deck building deck, Monty. Uh, what are your thoughts here? This is a really, really cool deck. I like, I really like the minion alongside the Kindred. I like the one of Elise just for the early game. It makes sure that he's not falling too far behind. Flock, of course, the only reason you're going to be in Noxus if you're playing, like, one of the two reasons you're going to be playing a Noxus control deck. The other one is, of course, Scorched Earth. And then in some metagames, Calling Strike is very good. This is one of those metagames you see three of in there. And then... We do see the Boo Sentinel making a, an appearance in this deck as well. And of course, the Hecarim that we talked about as that top end. This is just an absolutely... Who would have thought Hecarim was coming back? I didn't. I didn't expect to see this. It's, this is a phenomenal deck. I hope we get to highlight a little bit of it, maybe. But uh, we'll see. Yeah, 100% agree there, man. Uh, I personally knew he was, Hecarim was coming back. Uh, I just, you know... My uncle works at Riot Games, um, so mm -hmm. he just decided to slip me a little bit of info. He said, hey, just so you know, uh, Black Boss will be playing Hacker in the upcoming tournament. Um, I know because I, I, I helped him build this deck. Uh, Hacker is an incredibly powerful card. I think a lot like the, the big thing right with Hacker is just that it just feels a little slow and ephemerals aren't the best. And I like what I like about the deck list here that Black Boss has built is that it doesn't actually focus on the ephemerals as much. 
uh, even with three copies of Hecarim, one Harrowing should flip Hecarim. And since we're running that Kindred uh, package there, where we're okay with killing a lot of our own units to get that Kindred to flip, we'll have plenty of, if you know, pretty okay targets to work with Harrowing. And then Hecarim, just one Hecarim, will make those okay targets into real board threats. Absolutely. And of course, uh, as you may have noticed from playing on the ladder lately, there are a lot of... of uh of landmark decks running around, including Mono Shurima. So this is deck is teched as, for that as well with the Scorched Earth in there. I would imagine Black Boss might have brought this with expecting to see a little bit of Mono Shurima. Knowing yeah. Shadox is a, a bit of a fan of that deck and another player who is on Beautiful Gamers but is not in the roster today. Uh, so maybe they had a bit of a read and it just flopped. Maybe, maybe that was some of the mind games that were going on. That's just one of the things that's so fantastic about this tournament, Absolution. You can play those mind games. I did it myself with my team earlier today. We, I've been broadcasting that I'm on triple aggro this week everywhere. I talked mm -hmm. about it on the squad cast with Master Runeterra. I was like, oh yeah, if I play in a tournament this week, I'm playing triple aggro. Mm. And obviously I'm not in the lineup. Yeah, you... I'm, I'm, I'm sitting up here. <laughs> okay. And with that, I think we are, we have decided that we're going to follow what am I for the day. So we're going to jump into the band phase of that one. And we do see the bands coming out from both Ooh, sides. It's feel the rush taken pace. off the table. And from the side of what am I, he has taken away the Victor Zoe of Felios deck. These are some interesting bands. They make a lot of sense. The, the feel the rush deck has a way of putting down, uh, putting down big units in a method that Mecha's list cannot deal with. They yeah, have absolutely. a hard time dealing with that, those two massive overwhelm units at once. The other two decks are a little bit more manageable. Keg, uh, Kegs, we talked about, wants to play a little bit for that early game. Chip, aggro, and both the two decks from the side of Mecha deal with that pretty effectively. And then the Thresh Asol deck that Watamai is so well known for uh, is very powerful, but only in his hands. So it, you're maybe a little bit more comfortable leaving that up. And then from the mm -hmm. side of Watamai, of course, taking out that Victor Aphelio Zoe deck, that is arguably just the highest power level deck from the side of Mecha. Yeah, for and sure. When I look it, at uh, yeah, go when, ahead, I, when I look at was when I look at Mecha's lineup, right? I don't see uh, any deck he can't really manage uh, with Sentinel Control. Um, it's kind of something that you could potentially go one to one with, right? I mean, what am I has brought a triple control lineup, so the control versus control matchup is basically going to be who's has the better top end, and Sentinel Control really does rely a lot on your opponent having units out, and so playing a control deck lets you kind of not play as many units which then ultimately makes that deck less effective. And then again, Tri-Beam uh, is another deck that's going to have a potentially harder time dealing with like a Thresh Asol deck um, just because of the, the amount of low damage that it can do consistently. It's it's more of a mid-rangey style piece. So mm -hmm. let's get, let's say we're jumping right into the gameplay here. Uh, with and it the, is the catalog deck up against the Tri-Beam. These are yes, nice. absolutely. These are good. I'm excited to see this. This is a matchup that I was not expecting to find round one, but uh, it's a good one. And we do see that catalog making an appearance right off the bat. No go hard. So, but uh, you do also the Boor Sentinel. What am I going to mm -hmm. be feeling good about this whole mulligan? Yeah, and Mika that's a as well. Solid one. I mean, yeah, I, I look at uh, I make his hand and I see, you know, maybe probably wants to get some sort of Caitlyn piece there, but he draws the Tribeam, which is really good. It's one of my dr drops down his first keg. Those kegs, though, are going to be, they're a little iffy, right? Because potentially you can invest right into those kegs if you if you wanted to. The second a trap hits your hits your deck, those kegs are potentially uh, worthless because it's so easy to get rid of them off of off of a draw. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it does nerf that little that bit of ping damage that the deck tries to do, uh, which I, I think in this matchup specifically is a bit is not as uh, is going to be pretty bad for what am I's end of the board, because a lot of units in uh, make is are going to have that two HP stat line. Definitely. Uh, I'm not sure how much he will care, though. As you mentioned earlier, the, the tribeam deck does kind of rely on you having units on the board and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. The trades should be a little bit more efficient uh, when they come through, and you can always just use the Gohards to pick it off. And there's the catalog. Goes right for it. With the Gohard in hand, right? That's pretty. That's a very strong play. It's probably going to be the only... Uh, the, I believe it's the only spell he's played this turn, which means he's guaranteeing himself a Gohard for next turn. Yeah, setting himself up very nicely to have this pack your bags available in two turns. We'll see if Watamai can draw into another copy of Gohard 
so that it's there. And the there's the thermo beam, the one mana thermo beam. Uh, probably seems like maybe potentially Mako's is going to try to set up the open attack, play a very aggressive game plan, try to just beat what am I down before his deck can get going. And I think this is the way you have to play it as Mako. You you are very much the aggressor in this matchup. You want to get a big tri beam turn set up, but you don't really have the time to build up your tri beam. So this open attack makes a lot of sense. Six damage is quite a bit. Yeah, I completely agree. And Mika has a lot of tools in his hand still to deal with some of the potentially threatening units. We have our, uh, ourselves a spider for Gangplank, right? If he wants to go for a Gangplank swing, we have other resources in that hand as well. And potentially uh, can stop the Elise with the Culling Strike or any really any of the fearsome units with the Culling Strike. So all in all, if I'm, if I'm Mika's here, even if this is a more unit, a deck that's designed to fight against units, I'm still feeling pretty comfortable. And I really like this gangplank from the side of what am i he knows that the tri beam isn't stacked up yet he knows that this keg is going to set up this go hard to be very very good at removing one of these three twos and if removal is used on the the keg that's good for you if it's used on the gangplank well you got a free keg out of it i mean yeah exactly at the gangplank for for what am i his champions especially in this deck really aren't win cons they're just additional pieces of the deck so it feels a bit easier to play them and let them get blown up and kind of use them as ways to draw aggro and to burn good cards from your opponent's hand mm -hmm. uh, you're of course not feeling great about losing the gang plank there but you did get to remove you did get to make use of a go hard that was otherwise going to do nothing and you drew out some piece of removal from your opponent exactly now the decision is what do you do yeah you that is a good death? question uh, I think the TF comes down, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be impactful enough. I potentially might even go, yeah, Buru Sentinel feels like a, a very neutral play. Um, I think that with what I'm as hand, he either has neutral or potentially negative plays, right? You don't want a vengeance of any of Makus's units. So I think going for that Sentinel and to potentially getting the card draw off of the Fortune Croaker this turn or next turn is a very solid just setup. Yeah. And we do have an update from the other match in this, one of the other matches in this series. Ooh. Aniki has take, gone up 1-0 against Kevin. And while that was happening, a catalog regrets got blown up. Absolutely. That is a very devastating uh, hit, in my opinion, right? That catalog is a, is a very strong and I'd say semi-essential piece of what AMI's strategy and game plan here. So losing that, this with... Only getting one extra go hard off of it's gotta feel bad. You want to at least go for two or three. Definitely, you, it, it it certainly does feel bad. It could have been worse. He could have gotten no value out of it. But yeah, he did that's true. At least get to set his go hard to two out of three. The zap that he just drew is gonna be able to put him at three out of three if he's a little bit lucky. And the odds should be good because he shuffled some back in. Yeah, he's got he's got an additional two copy, actually four copies right now, mm -hmm. floating around in that deck. And uh, the block here, I mean, it makes sense, right? potentially might go for the the three three just because i like i'm a numbers guy I like when numbers are the same but the, it's still oh yeah piercing darks okay interesting interesting actually this makes sense as well i wonder if we'll see the tf come out for a blue card here instead of the zap just to be a little bit greedy mm -hmm. yeah i think the tf does feel safe right because we're, again we're not only trying to flip the tf so at most, we use him to get ourselves out of a sticky situation. A board wipe if we need him. He can stop an attack if we need him. Or he can draw us a card and fix our spell mana. I think most likely we will probably end up banking the mana here. Uh, and it looks like that is indeed what What Am I wants to do. Ooh, and goes comes for the Aloof Travelers. Oh, that's such a, such, a, such a big hit. Especially into a deck like Tribeam, which does kind of like want to play a good amount of units uh, as you get those later turns. That's definitely a bigger... A bigger loss to have. Um, what am I does decide to go for that zap this turn, decides that he really needs to turn on the clock, find those go hard, be able to shuffle some more back in and increase his odds even further of drawing into the pack your bags. And it's There's just gonna get removed by the pacemaker. Yep, and, and there we see kind of the weakness of this go hard deck into that sort of tribeam archetype, right? Because a lot of we see he can draw his way out of a lot of situations here, but he needs to have something on board to do it. And as long as the as long as a tribe deck can keep removing the the b units on board, there's a lot less value. But ooh, good hit on the dreadway there. Potentially a, a very strong piece of the of this puzzle for pretend, for sneaking out a little bit of a win. 
Yeah, with the Packer Bags and the, with the Dreadway on the board, the Packer Bags is going to deal 10 damage, which is half the Nexus HP. Exactly. It's uh, There's also a Ledros in this deck for what am I, and with all the draw, if he can find it, if he can buy the time, he can find it. Just a matter of can he buy the time. That Tribeam is getting stacked up. It's got to be at uh, 4 now, I believe I it's at yeah. I think that one puts it at four, because um, we've seen the we've seen ourselves a arachnoid sentry and now a culling strike and that. So we're definitely probably closer to five. I'd say with the uh, I think so. Our our landmark destruction there. And here comes the battle. We'll yep. hope we see another glimpse come out. We do indeed. Yep. I think you kind of have to go for it at this point. Your opponent's committing so many resources, and this is denying yeah. not one but two as real triggers. I mean, those draws aren't bad, but they're definitely not what we're looking for in this situation here. No, they are not. They're more draw, which is okay, as you said, Abso, but uh, we really do want to be finding those power cards in, in the, the Go Hard. Now, in the that, was an, of regrets. that was an interesting Thermo Beam, right? Because if, if I'm the side of Makus, right, I've, if I'm looking at a deck list, I mean, I want to keep that Thermo Beam up for Dreadway. So potentially the, we're, we're at, what, six on that Tribeam, though, at this point? So maybe so. maybe he feels comfortable just getting rid of it, right? It's kind of burning a burning a slot in his hand. Not super potential. And there's the Elise. Good card. Uh, don't see a decent commitment from Makus here if he wants to remove that based on yeah. what's in his hand. I think that uh, that Thermo on the last turn was drawn off the Station Archivist. So mm, just mm, using it okay. for the Ezreal trigger, most likely. That Whale picked up. A little bit of healing is going to help What Am I stay in this game, extend his time. And there's one of those there it is. that we needed. It's definitely something that we're looking to see on the side of what am I. And the good draw in the Arachnoid Sentry there, that can potentially kind of stuff any unit development on what am I's side of the board. Makes him get rid of an actual card that he played rather than a little rinky-dink 1-1 one -one if he wants to glimpse beyond. But he's going to go for the swing, which I 100% agree. I feel like that's the, the right play here. Yeah, the other option is opening go hard, but uh, you can see what your opponent does first. Developing, as we can see, gets punished by several options. Yeah. And the other thing we didn't touch upon in uh, in Maka's hand is that he picked up a Hextech Transmogrifier yeah. off of the Pharaoh's Financier earlier. That's going to let him very, very efficiently deal with both Dreadway and Ledros. And speaking of Dreadway, here it is. Oof, that's going to feel very bad in a, probably in a, in a couple seconds um, and or another couple turns because, man, Hextech Transmogrifier is, a, is a, another card kind of like... Uh, was it Waking Sands, where it's not as good in a main deck situation, but if you can generate it off something, it can feel kind of nice. Absolutely. That is crazy. And another update from the other set, Haneke, 2 owed Kevin. Glimpse is going to so come out here. Tribeam comes down into the Glimpse Beyond. I don't believe this fizzles, but what am I does have double Vengeance in hand, so whatever six drop that uh, we see make us get off of this Tribeam, if it is scary, it's not going to stick around for very long, which kind of got to feel bad because that's a really that's one of the, the main ways that this tribe makes him to try to sneak out that win. Yeah, what am I has managed to. Oh, this is an interesting play from the side of Mecha. He's turning. He's going the opposite way on this one. He's turning his 2 3 into a. Oh, into a this that is. is... Oh, this wow. is a setup that I did not see coming. But he that put is it on the screen for us, right? We should have seen this yeah. one. He went with the tri-beam first. Oh, what's the transmogrifier going to do now? Oh my god, that's a pull. Oh, Zevi, that's a very strong that pull. That is value, baby. Oh man, we are gonna that's a, that is just a lot of things that are gonna come out of that deck right now with that Zevi on board. But even this dreadway is gonna be is terrifying, right? If I mean you're looking at a deck that's running a lot of burn, a lot of ping. That Dreadway has turned even Ravenous Flock into essentially a, I don't care what card you play. Mm -hmm. Goes for the Gohard out of the Zevi, respectable. I, think, I believe this is our third Gohard we've seen, so we'll probably see the transformation to pack your bags here. Yep, that is correct. And what are we going to see come out from the other side here? I think it's going for a Ravenous Flock. Yep. Just denying what am I any sense of a board here, uh, which will allow Makus to go into the next turn, which is his offensive turn with a big swing. And if he goes in as it stands now, we do need to see that vengeance get played on that dreadway. Otherwise, we're looking at a very bad, potentially uh, game ending situation. Yeah, and the tribe beam drawn there off of the, uh, doubled by the Zevi 
Not going to do a whole lot in this position. No, definitely not. So on the side of one of my, he's, he's looking at currently at Here. lethal. Yeah, 22. I yeah. forget we have we have a thing now that just tells you <laughs> doing the <laughs> math. Nice. still. Yeah, right. This is a solid as casters. Yeah, actually. <laughs> um, I mean, you, yeah, the vengeance kind of has to go down. The question is, you know, what taking, is the block? You're taking two here, right? Uh, yeah, I think you definitely want to take the two. I think you block the Zevi, you take the two, you vengeance the Dreadway, and you go about your business. That right there, the um, the keg is making our our pack your bag a six damage board wipe, mm -hmm. which is very solid. It is. It is. I was a little bit confused by the play of the of the Dreadway deckhand last turn. I kind of expected mm -hmm. what am I to keep up a double vengeance, mm. and. Dipping below it is weird to me, but uh, he knows what he's doing better than most people do. So, interesting goes for that. I mean, you, what else you can use the tribune for? That's yeah. a fairly good, uh, good one drop to pull. I'm not gonna lie, the elusive. Even if you have to keep recasting it, it is an elusive card, so that feels very solid. The open pass, Ooh, double aloof. That's gonna hurt though, because right now, I mean, if we look at this hand, he's got a very good chance off of a second aloof of getting rid. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're you're just, just have to. At this point, you can't. No you option. know there's another aloof in there. I even think that the first open pass was like. I don't. I with the Zevi on board, giving them two. Uh, I guess mm -hmm. we already saw one aloof come down. It's it's pretty tough to get exactly that. Yeah, I mean, you know you have a card that's more expensive than it in, in your hand, so that's fine. You're like, you know, it, worst case scenario, I lose, I lose a Vengeance, which feels bad, but there's nothing that I, I think any of his removal spells can't deal with in that deck right now, outside of, like, the Hex Tech Dreadway situation. Yeah, and what am I found? Not one, but two zaps off of these draws here, and that's going to set him up very yeah, nicely. Yeah, very Go good. are the majority of the his low-cost spells remaining. All right, goes for the zap again. Uh, and there it is, two, a second copy of Go Hard. Wondering if potentially Go Harding before playing the zap would have been a, a viable option, but maybe he wants to keep, he probably wants to keep the mana up at this point. Think oh, so. never mind, doesn't matter. Three Go Hard. Three Go Hards, easy. I Ooh, think at man. this point you've shuffled enough in that uh, you're not too, too worried about finding mm. another one in time. You also aren't feeling incredibly pressured by your opponent. You are out of mm. decent removal, though. But you do have this box for this turn. That open pass is interesting because you have to kind of... I mean, yeah, I mean, sorry, we do have the box there, but you do have to set up... You do have to set up the... Um, what's it called? The the go hard, right? The go hard to pack your bags. So the open pass to me was a little interesting. I feel like potentially just playing one there just to have it go down could have been a, a decent, decent play. Especially on something like the Aloof Travelers. Absolutely. And here we're probably just going to see... Well... Passed faster than I could speak. And yeah. That was not what I was expecting. Not at all. Meeting. Ezreal comes down. Mega right, have... knows that they have to put on the pressure from this point. Yeah, I mean, we've seen both flocks already, right? So the if I'm if, if I'm look in, looking at Mega's hand, you know, if I'm him in the situation, I've played two flocks. My opponent knows I've played two flocks. So the stun feels less strong. Um and what am I going with the open fact? It just makes it pretty much worthless. Ooh, but you got to love the Piltover Peacemaker there. Such a strong spell. Yeah, it's a really good one. And it's going to open up the way for Ezreal after this. But fortunately, the Ezreal can just get pinged off because we did top deck a TF and red card yep. is looking very tasty here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Red card looks real nice. A gold card. Oh, yeah. There it is. Do you even go he, he for He might just TF be going for, for triple into... Go hard. Yeah. Pack your bags top deck. I don't know. I think. Don't you just always kill the Ezreal? I mean, I definitely. I think one of my has the mana to kill the Ezreal. It just does he want to burn all the cards in his hand to do it this turn? All right. It's good. Oh, nope. Oh, he can not gold go card. He can gold card. It's true. It's true. Go, go hard, hard and then addition. Gold card into go hard. Uh, or go hard into gold card. And oh, that right baby. there will set it up. So there's. Actually, you could go for every single card here if you really wanted to. Yeah. You I have mean, really we, good odds of drawing into the pack your bags from this point. Mm-hmm. You can go for red card to clear this off. Which, if I'm... I probably would look at the red card there. Uh, uh, oh, goes I, for the blue yeah. card. I okay. think the gold card is... is Well, the red card deals face damage as well. I yeah, think that's what, that's what, what I really that. wants to close out this game is what's mm -hmm. going on here. So, he thinks... Uh, he's already lost half, his, half of his win conditions at this point. 
Solid draw. Uh, Honest, yeah, definitely cash it this turn. You very mana efficient to play it this turn. Oh, that hurts. Never mind. That's okay. <laughs> you can lose one. You have so many more in your deck. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. It's just when you see the card you want get tossed, it does it does hurt your soul a little bit there. But another yeah. fearsome, very strong. Oh, and that's oh, a oh, parent. oh, that's a vengeance <laughs> target for sure. Goes yes, with the guard first. One hundred percent agree with that decision. Uh, get rid of the the Ezreal because you don't want him out here anymore. Yeah, cannot be on the board. You cannot afford to take any more no. damage from this point. And then you just have to to Vengeance that. Yep. And then go in the next turn. Although this is looking very very strong for what am I here? Lethal uh, open attack, right? Uh, yeah, this makes actually. A spiderling. Yep, that is a one hundred lethal open. So we make could, his has to oh, top there's, deck there's, and answer. Uh, there's two flash bombs left in the deck. I think we saw one draw and then we, we saw two pacemakers cast. What did we get off this off that draw? We Switcher got a is not gonna do it. Oh, not gonna do it. That's one gonna be game. game oh, wow. that was that a nail biter. Absolutely, that really was a back and forth. That was a really engaging back and forth match yeah. from both players. Just kudos to both of them for playing so skillfully. What a great way to start off our uh, our evening oh, here. I, man. It was so great. Was Control really mirrors exciting. sometimes go really long and they get really draining, but that was hype the entire way through. That it just didn't stop being exciting. Yeah, and I think that's the style of control they're both playing isn't pass go, right? Uh, draw go control. It is very active playing <laughs> things control, right? It's it's more of a an anti uh, aggro control style of deck. So they have they pretty much have the ability to go aggressive, and you saw them both taking turns saying, "Okay, now I'm going to go really crazy, and uh, now I'm going to uh, slow down a little bit." And going into this next game with, uh, okay, what am I taking? It looks like Thresh A Soul into once again tribeam yeah i'm a little bit surprised to see the run back from Mega. i think this is probably the worst match the worst of the two matchups that they have left up yeah uh, I, I, spell shield's really problematic for a tribeam deck yeah kindred just also feels a bit stronger because she does get to just kill around spell shield which is pretty strong true yeah all right, there's the shield breaker such a such a good card to play on a defensive turn that solar Where did shield that there. Card go? It just kind of disappeared from the meta. Daybreak fell off. <laughs> I guess. Well, was Daybreak every on to fall off? Eh, you know, some people like to play Yasuo, Leona. That's a deck. True. Ooh, okay. Shock Blast, probably? We'll see in a second here. And yep, yeah, Shock Blast. was indeed the Shock Blast. I think that was probably the best pickup. And For sure. That was really interesting. We just saw full passes coming out. Remember, kids, you don't have to spend your mana every single turn. You really don't. This is, uh, coming from other card games, it could be a really hard lesson to learn, but... Yeah, because like in other cards, some other card games like Hearthstone, yeah. not spending your mana every turn is like, what? Yeah, you're going to lose, bro. Yeah. Other games, it's the person who does the most stuff will win. In Room Terror, there's a lot of decks where the person who does the least stuff is the winner. Yeah. Uh, really and there's the, there's the Thresh. Thresh here, very interesting card, right? We don't see a lot of units on one of my's board, but Thresh kind of makes the game plan of the Tribeam deck a, a negative factor, right? Because every time you potentially have one of those tri beams, there's a those traps go off. Uh, if it hits the wrong target, Thresh gets that much closer to ripping an Aesol out of the deck. Absolutely, but doesn't matter. Does not matter. Oh, what a good yeah. scorched earth. Doesn't care when there's a scorched earth in the deck, though. But of course, there's two more Thresh in the from the side of what am I here? I, yeah, I don't think he really cares strong. too much about losing that first one. No, I mean, I definitely wouldn't. I mean, you got two more in hand. You play the second one. If he takes that one out, too, you just burnt a whole lot of spells. I mean, it took him two spells to get rid of one Thresh. Absolutely. <laughs> the Thresh is probably going to go for the Caitlyn here, but not going to be allowed. Mika drops the Stun Spider. Yeah, very Sister. smart. Uh, the swing here, though, is interesting, right? Because it's no swing. Yeah. Yeah, you just want blockers. No, that makes sense. Point. That makes sense. Blockers or potentially flash bomb draw, like uh, things that can t take flash bombs for Thresh so he doesn't get hit with like a flock or something crazy. <laughs> and good station archivist here. I just, that card is, is very strong. Oh, what a Culling good strike. pull. Calling strike. That'll do it. Just gets rid of Thresh f for free, like card positive uh, yep. removal on that Thresh. That is very strong. That is indeed very strong. What am I, of course? It takes out the Tri-Beam, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, it does. That's two ticks That's... for Tri-Beam. It's That's such a good card in this deck. So much value, dude. Oh, that's got to be. That's just That's just scary, right? That's that's a, just a very scary sequence of cards to see come down. 
into the third thread. <laughs> just like, okay, great. What a good emote. You gotta love, I love uh, emoting in this game. It's just so so fun when you emote at the right times. So don't do it too much, but occasionally you can really just like make your opponent laugh with a, with a well-timed emote. Emotes are great. I love emotes myself. I think they are an integral part of the game. I think they're phenomenal. I think uh, you just have to be respectful with them, you know? You yeah. can bluff with them, but just don't be a jerk. Don't don't just like exactly. spam infinite emotes like constantly. Or you know, whenever your opponent makes a misplay, just spam big flex, and that's always fun for for you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Looking here, I, I all I see on one of my side of the board right is a very like, go ahead, swing, like do it. You know, this this board is drawing is this board state is threatening because of how low the HP is. And this Caitlyn swing now, again, becomes a potentially bad thing. Oh, goes for the full block. That is interesting. Yeah, this is just going to set the... Oh. Oh, yeah, I would I would definitely leave one unit on board just in case, right? Because we know flash bombs are going to come out at some point. So you want to at least have one alternate flash bomb target up at all times to potentially stop, again, the thrash from getting hit with the flash bomb before he flips. It's true. It's true. And I expect we will see this next turn start off with a Blinded Mystic to push the Thresh out yeah. of that Culling Strike range. We do know it's coming. That is one of the down, quote-unquote downsides to... Oh, and it doesn't matter Ooh. that he left the Spider up. Does not matter. But it, it does put Thresh at back at 6 HP. So that's, that's fairly strong, right? Because a lot of the... Outside of, like, at, I believe it's what, Aftershock is the card that, that kills, correct? Uh, Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth, thank you. After, outside of Scorched Earth, not much is going to outright kill a six health unit outside of investing a lot of mana or playing the seven, the big seven tribeam. No that, more Thresh. That's a good hit off of your seven mana tribeam. Yeah, a fearsome seven seven is real strong in this board state. Got to vengeance it right away for sure. Yeah, for sure. Hundred percent agreed on that. Oh, oh, maybe not. I think vengeance you do. I don't think you can speed. let it attack. It is, but. I, I don't think you can let it attack. Maybe. Uh, I have, I'll have. i admit, I've never actually seen Raz Bloodmane uh, played. So does he have an alternate effect on play that, that goes no, off? No, but I believe on, when, he attacks, attack? when he attacks, he, uh, he gives the enemy board minus attack. I'll take minus over right now. Attack. Yes, minus two attack to the enemy board whenever he attacks. So yeah, that is a fairly strong card. The double Mystic Shot, though. Uh, man, this game... Amekas is just dominating the board right here. Just very, very strong board. But that withering oh whale God. to save the day. What a top deck. Good is... players draw the cards <laughs> they need when they need them. That is so insane. Not wow. only are we just pretty much negating the damage of the swing, putting Megas in a situation where now he's has to work to get back to where one of my HP was, just potentially clears half the board. But very strong. Now all three Thresh and one of two Aesol gone from the deck. Oh, and that just killed and itself. It flips the Caitlyn. That is scary. Um, leveled Caitlyn will kill you in two turns. Yeah, it's terrifying. yeah, for sure. For sure, it's insane. She is an incredibly powerful card when she flips. Like it's super understated, like underestimated how good she is. Uh, going into the Pale Cascade, there. Yeah, I mean you're definitely looking for some way. Ooh, Golden Sister's not bad there. Falling Comet is also okay i think um, you're okay on the removal not bad. you have yeah both vengeance and piercing darkness I, left in your I hand i like golden sister here me too for the life steal and the elusive the meteor shower lines up really nicely as well but uh i don't know i think you need the life steal at this point i think you need to try and keep yourself in this game a little bit yeah yeah no i completely agree I and mean, we have and we also already have you know piercing darkness oh. in the hand so that wow. makes sense right you have piercing darkness in hand that that's a potentially uh a, a an option that I would take there too. Because we strike, do have that game. Strike, pacemaker, Oof. Scorched Earth. These wow, are not terrifying. really what you want to see if you're Mako, though. You no, could be I mean, putting the pacemaker, I think, just to mm -hmm. just to continue the Caitlyn level up. Goals but nope. for the calling strike. Interesting. I think I think Mako's here is just trying his best to uh, or their best to make sure what am I has no board, so that way their board can keep winning, right? Because every time mm -hmm. what am I plays a unit. Make his losing advantage, uh, adva advantage position. So I think he just wants to make sure he's maintaining that same advantage throughout the course of the game, and yeah. that only strikes can help him do it. I still think Pacemaker does it a better job of it. Yes, it's punished mm -hmm. by the by the Pale Cascade, but I agree. it also amps up your Caitlyn, right? Yeah, and exactly. It, it's a free, it's a free Pacemaker, and that's the difference. 
If it was just a naturally drawn one and you had the option of both, okay, maybe I'll go for the Calling Strike, but I really want to be trying to end this game as quickly as possible. I think we've already seen one Vengeance come out. We've seen one of my go for a Meteor Shower off of that pick. And of course, we don't know what he, what he was offered, but when you're offered, when you see your opponent take a Meteor Shower in a deck that's so removal heavy, you kind of anticipate that they're out of removal at this point. Yeah, exactly. But there's one of those new cards there. Uh, Spectral Wonders, I believe it's called, or Celestial Wonders, that five mana fast speed stun two. Very good into what Makus' current board state. Uh, very, oh, very good. Makus deciding not to play out the Pharaohs here. Ooh, what am just, I? Oh, ooh, that's, a, that's risky. This is going to get punished, as we can see, because the yep. Terran is going to come down now. Yeah, that Farron is potentially going to uh, change. That, uh, with Farron into Shock Blast pretty much means that in three turns, unless one of my can heal himself back up to a nice, healthy position, he's going to lose. And has a virtually unplayable hand from this spot. Yep. That's pretty much... You're, you have to play the this um, Piercing Darkness. You got to drop that down. We have a stun to stop the Farron from swinging next turn. Doesn't go for it this turn. That's so risky. Three decimates in hand. Oh, wow. that's just not. That's just bad luck. Ah, uh, I think you have to play the decimate. I don't know. Maybe you take the pass because it's a bait. But like, I may. I don't know. I, does clock actually matter? I think every turn that you no. give one of my matters though. I don't think you're supposed it, to be does, getting, giving right? one of my like, any more turns than than you have to here. So I think you have to be playing those decimates. Giving him the actions don't doesn't matter. You're not at risk of dying this turn. You saw him toss his atrocity earlier mm -hmm. in the game. You're not at risk of dying next turn as a result. Uh, unless uh, there's a... You pretty much... It's very good to keep on those decimates because it's going to force one of my to keep spending mana on things that aren't Aurelian Soul. Even insane if, play by Mecha, though. Oh, he just denied him. Heal, oh, that's game. That's, oh, that's game. That's game. Yeah. That's that's insane. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Hey, what, a uh, well, what am I insane play. What am I still not dead? Still that's not true. dead. That's true does have uh, healing He's got and four. can cycle this pale cascade now got four hp in that hand this is i'm i i'm currently just like i'm on the edge of my seat watching what's happening right now there's like, not many cascade. units left in his deck however no you have to yeah the pale cascade goes down gets the draw i feel like you have to go for the withering whale here yes you do. draws the vengeance but has no no there's basically no units left in his deck there's only one a soul and there's no way to cheat it out he's got it now stall it, out at until this he point, can draw into I it. Don't, I don't think it matters because if you remove the Captain Farron, right? Uh, you're getting oh, killed by the arachnoid sensor. We do. No, you're right. Oh, this is so this is this is insane. This is huge. This is this is I'm, I'm, a little I'm bit lost healing. for words. Oh my god, that's oh, not enough. Not enough. And the Ezreal Fine 2 guarantees that even if the healing was picked up, Mega's gonna take game two. We have a series on our hands. Oh that what a what an insane nail biter of a game to what that these two players are giving me like heart palpitations on the last four turns of their games. Uh, it's insane what we are watching here. These games have been starting off not even slowly, but it feels that way compared to the way they've yeah. ended. It's just crazy. These last two, three turns of these past two games have just been absolutely phenomenal. Some of the best Legends of Runeterra I've seen in a while, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for us in this next game, too. Exactly. We're gonna I, I to do want to point out, I believe at one point, Makus did aloof an Aurelian soul out of uh, one of my's hand. I thought it was so, the Runation that they hit. Did they? Uh, did they, did they hit I the know, soul? I'm pretty sure one of my drew an A-soul that game, because I saw it, and then it got it, just, it went away at some point. So I don't know how that happened, but I'm pretty sure I saw him draw an A-soul and lose it. Uh so but here we go. Going into the next game here, looking at uh, Sentinel Noxus. What is this? This is a. Uh, this is that that Vi list, correct? Or no? It's um. Gotta pull it up. Gotta pull it up. Gotta pull it up. It is the oh, it is Sentinels. That's right. It's yeah, Sentinels. It's Sentinels. It is Sentinels. Sentinels into Aurelian Soul. This one, excuse me, is going to be very, very interesting, right? If we have. Uh, we have a semi-fast hand on Makus' side, but no Vi. And I, I think Vi is really what you want to see here, because that's going to help you win the game as early as possible. Yeah, the Sentinels are pretty good, though, and Kindred as well, also going to enable uh, what uh, Makus to start building up a threat of their mm. own, which is mm. important. Yep, that's a in interesting swing. 
I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think it's very very neutral play. Very it's, it's a very good option. Safe, right? Uh, even if he plays Bruce, I know we still have some fearsome blockers in hand with that second copy of Mountain Goat. Honestly, MVP Targon card, Mountain Goat survived every meta. Uh, never once uh, think been bad. Uh, it's just a fairly good card. So, oh, let me get an update here. Uh, Cephalopod just went 1-0 in his match. Uh, who's he playing against, Monty? Do you remember? I do not remember. That's all good. Oh, it was actually against Black okay, Boss. Okay, in the Black was... Boss. <laughs> that's uh, indeed the first game while we're about to finish the third here. So yep. that's what happens when you get Invoke Mirrors. I'm so glad we dodged that one, Abso. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was game being, uh... one? Yeah, that was game one. We wow. Cast two. We're halfway through the third. They finished one. <laughs> Oh, man. We would have had to ad-lib so much there. You don't Instead, want to know what I would have been saying. I would have been telling stories at that point. <laughs> oh, my. We would have made Boulevard proud, though. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Looking at this play here, again, just, uh, I like that. I like that play. The Sentinel into the swing there. Kind of forces the uh, the mountain to block with the Vile Feast coming up. Yep, I like it. It's good. I, yeah, definitely with the Pale Cascade there, from what I'm like. Yeah, just send it back with the Pale here. You're not too sad about that. It's going to deny the sentinels mini level up condition as i like to call it but of course then you're set you're setting yourself up for the glimpse if you're Mega. and which... you get to play the gem which heals the goat and he's back to back to being a nice healthy boy and decides not to take the glimpse probably just wants to hold it to use to counter removal or maybe alongside this kindred later in the game yeah that's what i would i was thinking to myself is you know use it as a good kindred enabler because kindred is a very scary scary unit like you don't want to block into this board right now because you'll lose your other your other unit here. Uh, it's just Kindred at four mana puts so much pressure. Oh, Moon Silver. Ooh, I would honestly potentially take the Serpent if yeah, I'm looking this. Or I'm the Dog. Either it's the dog two. Or or Moon Silver. I think you've resigned yourself to like not playing the Celestial Wonder this turn mm -hmm. when you when you play the the Spacey Sketcher. But once you're offered the Moon Silver, it then gives you the option to play tr a trick, right? You can be mm, like, Haha, that's true. I do have it. That's true. I so, look at it with uh, Kindred, right? Kid I think Kindred commands a lot of attention when she comes down. Mm -hmm. So I look at things like uh, the dog and the uh, are, are the serpent as just cards that will take the Kindred hit for for you if you need to say block a three three fearsome, right? Um, yes. But we do already have the space catcher out, so it's already doing that. So it's a very good point there on uh, on that. A very good point that I personally uh, did not remember in the moment. Well, that's okay. That's why there's two of us, right, buddy? Exactly. <laughs> uh, that's right. We cover for each other. And Ooh, good. what am I considering? Vengeance. Mm, what do you that, think about that? I like it, honestly. I like anything that's like, okay, I can play the game again. And Kindred being out does, in a way, prevent you from playing the game in a way you want to. Um, so I think getting rid of the Kindred there is very strong. Potentially a glimpse beyond there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You know, it, it's... Right, for one of my... It, it doesn't feel as bad because that never would have happened if you didn't play the Vengeance, so you still got what you wanted, but it still feels bad because your opponent gets to draw two cards. So Yes, and these are some interesting picks. We already have a Runation Ooh. available to us, so he Shock Blast is safe. Hextech Anomaly can be anything, though. I really yeah. hope he took it, and he did! Yep, there it is. That's, a, that, that's what I like to see there. Okay, Make is going for the Pog plays. He's giving us, the casters and the viewers, what we want to see. Make people's champ. definitely after the people's hearts. Goes with the Mystic Shot again. Yeah, just really commanding board. And gets that Sentinel to a nice 3-3 three, three level up condition. Very solid. Ooh, star I shaping. I really love the design of the Sentinels. I like that there I are, do too. are units that like grow, but they grow in a very specific way. And it acts like this little mini game for you. It's always really interesting. That's a Shifting Sands. If you've never seen that card, it summons three uh, Sand Soldiers yes. and does three damage, I believe. Funny enough, I have seen that card, but not because I've, I've included it. I just think I've seen it when I've been looking at cards that don't get played. Uh, yeah. It goes for the Traveler. Solid cosmic. pick. Uh, yeah, cosmic. you take Cosmic. 100% Cosmic. I mean, it, I think it's actually Comet. Well, no, we have two Vengeance. We don't care. Yeah. Right? It's com it's I don't cosmic think we care. We have in this spot. two Vengeance, a Hush, a, a you know, Stun 2, we'll and we still can invoke again. And it is the Comet, actually. He does okay. go for it. One of my definitely feels like the type of player, though, who does like to just play extra safe. You know, like reinforcing his board position and his position in the game rather than Oh, trying to overextend, but I think it leads to a lot of his success, right? He's Absolutely. very safe. Definitely, yeah. He he really is a very measured player. He thinks through his lines very, very thoroughly. He knows exactly what he wants to do, and he correctly identifies both his win conditions, which is something that people talk about a lot, but also his lose conditions, mm -hmm. which is 
where I wanted to go with this point because I think by taking the cosmic inspiration, yes, you're putting yourself ahead, but you're never winning this game through the board, right? You're mm -hmm. always winning through infinite value by the ASOL. And yes, it'll help you expedite your ASOL level up, but mm -hmm. you know what's going to be more important? Making sure that nothing is on the board to contest yeah. your ASOL. Not dying to a Vi. Yeah. That's also very important. Ooh, goes for the Phoenix again. Yeah, there you see it again. That very, that very measured and considerate. Like, okay, opponent has a lot of removal. Phoenix is nice because it makes them remove it twice. Right, Absolutely. very smart yeah. pull. It is one of the more pesky units for control decks to deal with. It doesn't have spell shield, but having to kill butt. something twice is problematic. Yeah, essentially, it's it's essentially a spell shield in that way. Like, it's not the same thing. You can still obliterate it, but how many cards do they obliterate? Not that many. And here comes the Vi. Interesting Vi there. I, makes sense, though. We look at makes his hand. Probably not going to get the full value off of Vi just chilling in her hand. So I think just putting her down and saying, OK, I can hit these one ones and start scaling her up, uh, you know, just get some value out of it is a solid play. Or potentially even just pulling the fearsome blocker, right? That's another very valid yeah. decision. Depends on how Mako wants to play this. I think with the way this is shaken out, they probably do want to get a little bit aggressive here, and I expect we'll see the buy go after E4-4. Ooh, and then we see the Thresh hit the hand. Uh, I don't know if you want to play it. It does draw aggro, right? It does kind of like... Threat, if you play the Thresh here, it can also throw in a mind game of like, oh, well, does he... You know, if you're looking at nine mana, potentially ten, if you're making sure like, okay, when where's the Aurelian Soul? Does he have the Aurelian Soul? If you play the Thresh down on this turn, it can kind of say like, I don't have Aurelian Soul. And it may make make us make a couple misplays with that information. And I was wondering if they were going to go for this Vile Feast, and it looks like they decided yeah. to. Smart. I, I think you good. have to in this point. With the way your hand is looking, you don't have a lot of mm -hmm. power left, so you need to get every bit of juice that you can out of these yeah. Sentinels. Completely agree. You got to You just got to get him going. And right now, um, you know, what am I thinking about? What he wants to play here? Uh, if I'm Makus, right, this is a good board state for me. I'm pulling the fearsome blocker. I'm swinging for in for six damage, guaranteed. Probably gonna lose the three one, most likely, right? And then you'll hit for so what seven damage total? Off that, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Puts him at I ten, which is the clock. Wonder if what am I decides to hush on the pull here. That would be interesting for sure. You do have to do it now, right? Because once they challenge, even if you hush, it the challenge is still active. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it would so. kill the Vi, right? Yeah, it would it would stop the Vi from it would kill the Vi. If it um, pulls the 4-4, four four, as we're yeah. assuming it will. Which yeah. it may not, especially now That's that true. the thresh has come down. Very right. true. I'm a little bit surprised to see that the play didn't change. We'll see if the thresh gets pulled instead. Nope, still going after the 4-4. Four four. I think that's smart. Um because, wait, no, actually, what would I do here? I think if I'm, what am I? Oh, I don't think I would have played the Thresh because I think I wanted to keep the stun and the hush up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, it does feel, does feel good. But having the, the Fearsome Blocker also, like, you put the Fearsome Blocker down, you get progress towards your, you get, what, four souls for Thresh out of the six he needs to flip. Yeah. So that's not bad. Two A souls is is better than, than one, and one for free is better than none. And wow, actually, good box. Wait, wait, now what am I has to make the decision? Does he save this thresh? Does he kill the Vi? He wants to keep the hush up. I don't. How would he save the thresh here? He could hush the three three. He could vengeance the three three. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. He could stun the three three and the Vi. He had enough mana for that. He didn't have yeah. enough mana for both, but did have I, enough uh... mana. I respect that. it though, you know. I, I kind of like it. Just get let the thresh go. Keep your cards you have in hand. Keep your good cards and just play your Aurelian Soul next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a bad line. Uh, we're just in a bit of an awkward spot now, right? We have yeah. all these removal tools that we we weren't really able to use very efficiently over the past couple turns, despite having the time and the mana to do it. Mm -hmm. And now we're stuck with two Aesols in hand, and that's fine because it's a safety net and this deck has a ton of removal and a ton of low cost pings to get rid of spell shield but it it is a bit clunky yes i i do agree it is it is 100 clunky especially because asel hasn't flipped yet right so we're playing him into board states where we have to spend mana to develop and we give our opponent the chance to stop us from doing that uh, i do like the development here of just playing the immortal fire uh and kind of trying to force 
make us to start playing some cards and getting rid of things before we drop that ace hole. So that way he's a bit safer. I sort of like taking this pass. Yeah, no, I do. I agree. Does as I well. agree. That's a lot of mana to give up. And yeah, your opponent. Uh, I mean, oh, we have caster vision and looking at caster vision, it actually probably wasn't correct to take that pass. But that's a war mother's call, right? Yeah, that's Cow. scary. What is, is that hitting in that deck? I mean, we're ripping exactly champions kindred, out for right? free. Exactly. Or kindred. potential. Yeah, exactly. Kindred. It could get a Ledros, which uh -huh. it's not. We're not playing it, but we are just getting the chance to play it. It demands a block. It uh, is very strong. If it gets blocked, it becomes a big threat. Um, aloof Travelers, potentially. I don't think we've seen a single one all game. Do summon effects happen off of... Uh, they do, right? Uh, yes, War Mother's Call summons. Yeah. yeah all right, yeah, so yeah. we go for That's the cool. Aesil here into... What is that, Scourge? Yeah. yeah, the Scourge. Yeah, and that just makes sense. This is your... That's that's the ultimate win condition card now that it's been given. Overwhelm itself, it's, uh, it kind of actually works as a finisher card like it's supposed to. That buff did happen yeah. through a while ago, but invokes have been kind of off the table for a little while. But now we're looking at a very, very scary hand. And uh, we actually cast or bless that. The Kindred did show yeah. up, and there's the Buru Sentinel as well, but flipped Aesol is nothing to scoff at. You kind of have to ruination here like are you what you really want to do is is drop the the thermo beam for a low cost of the ruination so you get rid of everything but i think the ruination here still is the play like you can't no right you're just dead if you ruinate because uh the a soul and the and the eight five oh that's is. true that's true that's true so oh you're, yeah you're right you're that's really a very out of options oh no i think he's out of options in general here yeah he's just dead that is game one of my shows that he is indeed the Prince of Targon. He has ascended the mountain and been blessed by the heavens. And yeah, what he am I really it. is flexing? I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. Skill. I thought he was kind of out of this game, to be honest, but uh, was able to stay in there, keep control correctly, just picked up these these spells that he didn't even need to use. Maybe, should have, maybe that's an argument to say that he picked up the wrong things, but was in control for the majority of this game, then slipped up a little bit, at least looked that way, came back, yet another exciting one. What a great first set. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I really, it, I think it comes down to the fact that one of my did play a very safe and patient game. He did not give his opponent a lot of information. Um, and the information that he did give him wasn't super useful based on the hand state that Mike has had, right? Because if Mike has had a very aggressive hand, one of my open passing like crazy, that's good. Like, that means, okay, I'm going to go crazy, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really just play a bunch of good stuff and we're going to have a good time. But drawing the Vi late wasn't super, uh, you know, super duper nice. You get the War Mother's Call randomly generated and it doesn't hit something super valuable like an Aloof Travelers or a Ledros, right? One of those really strong cards that you want to see hit the board. Um, it, it just then came down to what am I let the game go and eventually he started drawing really, really good stuff. Yeah, he did did indeed i uh i'm hoping we can get into some of the end of the cephalopod game if we're Absolutely. lucky that is that should still be ongoing oh man oh man cephalopod with a we got a update here cephalopod potentially with a 2-0 over black box which is a bit sad i was really looking forward to seeing that elise hacker index we just missed it that's oh. too bad <laughs> We were talking about how that went so long and we were going to get to see another game. And then it, uh, unfortunately, game two did happen, not go on. You know what? We, uh, it, it <laughs> okay. It ended with, about... pack your, with, uh, yeah. pack your bags, apparently just the, that, the uh... same way our first set started. That's a great way to end a set too, right? Because yeah. you don't have to say anything to your opponent. They just know they should pack their bags and go home. Like, <laughs> it's, it just, it just does it for you. Oh boy! Oh man, yeah, what a that strong game. A little bit of it's—it's it's like internalized BM, right? Like, cause yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. There's it's a great. number of cards that are very BM, like on play, and it's trash, so trash. funny. That's another oh one. yeah. Like, I'm just gonna beat you with a bunch of trash. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Um, what's another? What's another option? I'm thinking of something. There's a, there's cards that have like really great voice lines. When they come down, they just start talking bad trash. I love, I personally, like when, when I'm playing Akshan, I should probably change my in-game name for this, but when he says you can't escape from Absolution, like you don't understand how that makes me as a person feel, right? Like <laughs> I play, Akshan flips and I'm winning and I'm like, you can't escape from this loss you're about to take, brother. Yeah, I, he does indeed say your name. So 
But maybe you should change your in-game name, like you said, so that way yeah. people can actually identify you. you feel the pain. It's real easy for Runeterra. I know all the league gamers are hurting because their wallets are right charges them for it. But for us, we can just. I go think to they account. changed it now. Did they? Okay. Yeah, because they're they're linked accounts. Okay. 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 I thought it used to be though. It used to be, and it's maybe sucked. I don't know. I I actually haven't logged into League since I put the WW in front of my name, so I don't mm -hmm. I I don't know if it, it it works that way. But you can go to accounts like right ten bucks. I think. Yeah, it was expensive. It was expensive. Um, that is very hype. Um, yeah. Okay, are we jumping into another match, or is that the end of games for today? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna go to a quick break, is what we're gonna do, and then uh, we'll be back with the second series of our night, which is. Chip versus Zenigma Stromboli. Stromboli, of course, if you watched season one, you do remember them. They unfortunately have lost their prints, but uh, they brought in Ryan F. and Miles to make it up. And Church of Targon has maybe next time, Scathis, and Infinite Patrons has stepped up to the plate to replace James in that roster. We'll see what these two players' <laughs> teams have in store yes. for us. Yeah, we got a nice That's set coming be up crazy. after these two. It's it's gonna Dude. be a good one. Oh man, I'm excited. All right, yeah, let's uh let's 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 accelerate time. Let's make time go faster so I can watch this stuff go down. <laughs> so uh yeah, I think with that we are just gonna cut to a bit of a break and then we'll be back to break down those games and those deck lists and everything from the next series after that. See you guys there. Stick around for all the action. Don't leave. If you leave, I will find you and drag you back. Mm-hmm.
Welcome back to another Thursday night, Agus. Legends of Ruterra. <laughs> I'm scuffing this. Absolutely. You want to take over for a second? I'm Welcome I'm back, gamers, here. to another night of the Aegis Academy Tournament. Team-based Runeterra gameplay. The best of the best, jammed into tiny boxes and forced to play with each other for hours on end with no food or water. Yeah, that's, just that's so we happening. can deliver to you good content. It is happening okay. up here. All right. 
I'm your host, Absolution TV. Also your host. There's two hosts. Get yeah. over it. It's just how we do things. I'm Monte Cristo. Welcome back, guys. I am super excited to bring you into the Enigma Stromboli versus Church of Targon matchup. For those of you who don't know, Stromboli were the underdogs. They were the kind of the, the people's champions last season. They Everybody kept saying, who are these guys? Who are these guys? We don't know them. They're not going to go far. They're not going to do anything. And then they took it all the way to the finals, where they lost to Bo, unfortunately, who we did just see. Uh, they did Tromboli, take down- also a delicious uh, Italian cuisine, which some people think is just a calzone. But like Enigma Stromboli, when you compare them up against each other, the Stromboli does go to the finals. It does. And Church of Targon, of course. Everybody knows Grandpa Roji skate this, and maybe next time, some of the strongest players, again, on the server. Uh, Zenigma Stromboli did lose their Prince. Stromboli Prince is no longer in the lineup. He's been taken out and brought in by Ryan F. and Miles, who our producer and uh, lore director Hirsch has informed me was a League of Legends player back in the day and actually scared Hirsch enough that uh, he didn't want to play against him very much. He got out jungled a few too many times. So we'll see if Ryan can make a splash and put Strike Fear into the hearts of the chip gamers as well on this uh, in this Riot game. Of course, he may try, but uh, Church of Targon is packing a, a very strong, strong secret weapon, all right, in the form of uh, Skathis. Very powerful and dominant player. This guy, first of all, he's brought Dr- Draven Rumble Victor, okay? I don't know, maybe he maybe he watches the Absol, Absol channel, because I absolutely use this deck to destroy Squeebie, okay, about a week ago. So I'm just seeing some coincidences there. But also, this very solid aggro lineup, uh, which looks to, like, it's going to do a pretty good job into, all right, I was going to, like, fo- talk about decks, but I just see uh, Donut Bazooka is bringing Fizz, Ken, and Yumi, and I don't know what that is. Where are we look? Oh, that's interesting. What is this? Why did we not? Ha- we should have highlighted <laughs> this deck. That, what that's... is this? <laughs> Oh, it's just Yordles and Arms. Oh, it's okay, never mind. Arms. That's never okay. Mind. It's, it's not, not cool. nearly it's as not. interesting as you thought it was. There's just no Lulu in <laughs> wow. it for some reason. So as I was saying, uh, this very strong aggro lineup uh, looks to be pretty well positioned into these decks that we're going up against. Yeah, yeah. actually, we, we do already know our matchup of this series. It's going to be Aichi the Red Panda up against Skathis. Oh, so, yeah, it's almost, uh, like, I, it's almost it is, like I knew. It is an aggro mirror. It is an aggro mirror. Absolutely, we have Zixtalia on the side of IG. We have Scouts and we have the Rally Azir. These are not aggro aggro. I would say these are more tempo aggro. Scouts, mm-hmm. of course, is combo aggro. If we want to get nitpicky with these names, and I don't Draven think traditional Rumble nomenclature is like OTK. Like yeah, it's all a you bunch can of call decks stuff. whatever you want. Ruben really? Ruben has talked about this a lot on his stream. Traditional deck nomenclature just doesn't work in Legends of Runeterra. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. I've talked about this with Skarzig. I've heard Ruben talk about this. I've talked about this with so many other players. You can play at whatever speed that you want to play at. I actually just, uh, the fact that it's an aggro, aggro v aggro mirror is really interesting because aggro in Runeterra is, is very challenging to play well at a high level. Uh, with aggro being such a proactive archetype, you're kind of have to be really good at, at reading and sometimes just guessing and holding L's because you guessed wrong. Um, so to to bring those three decks, it's a lot of it really aggro is all mental, right? Because like it's all one drops. You don't have a lot of answers to things. You just have to try to like outrace your opponent, but intelligently outrace your opponent, if that makes sense. Yeah, you definitely do. And especially with a deck like Talia Ziggs, which I think we're going to bring up on st- Green in just a second for you guys to take a look at. Absol can help me bring it down. This is a newer deck that's kind of cropping up, and it is definitely one that plays a lot more for tempo, as I said. For those of you who don't know tempo, aren't familiar with that term, think about it in the same way you would for music. It's the pace at which the the game is played. You can go fast, mm-hmm. you can go slow, your opponent has to keep up with you. It's uh, There's a great article on Master Runeterra's website written by Jason Sensational that covers the entire thing. Uh, Go there if you want a real good breakdown. But the gist of it is that tempo decks make you play at their pace. They yes. push the pace of the game. They want you to follow their lead and react to what they're doing. And also, um, important to note, because of the fact that tempo cards are so like 
it's you got to play them at certain points. They're often very front loaded with value. So a lot of tempo cards in Runeterra, especially things like uh, Desert Naturalist or um, uh, like Arachnoid Century is a good tempo card because all everything you want from that card happens on the turn that you play it. It's uh, afterwards. It's just a three two body, right? You know, afterwards, it's just a body or it's uh, nothing because it's a spell. Um, they're all very front loaded with value. So, again, like you going to play reactively or you're going to play proactively. Like it's a very fun dance you have to play when you're playing these aggro decks. And Sigstalia is one of my personal, personal favorite pre-built rides ever made. I think it's very, very fun. Uh, landmarks are cool. Anything that gives me something else to do in game that's not playing Rune Terra is also really cool because then I can distract myself from the fact that I am losing. Just play better, Absol. Then you won't be losing. Yeah, Monty, I would play better, but I'm too busy trying to entertain these heathens. <laughs> too focused on them. <laughs> it's it's pretty difficult to be to be entertaining and play at a high level. It's uh, yeah. it, your focus can't be split like that. It's it's, it's, it's not it's not doable. This isn't Hearthstone or Magic where you can like let yeah. your opponent's turn go and you're like, I know what cards I'm looking out for, so everything else doesn't matter. This game is very much like, it's very back and forth. It's very much like the pace of the game is shifting every second. As we saw in the last two ma two matches we watched, the pace of the game changes like once every pass button. Every once every time someone hits the space bar, we're like, oh, now we're going super crazy. Yeah. It's a, it's a great game. It really does. And just to, to put, to set the scene a little bit for this upcoming set, Chip is coming off the back of a loss. They they did go down two to one against my own team, Worldwide Wombats. So when you come out when you when you're playing a, a tournament like this with two back to back major sets and they're the most important sets and every set matters. Yep. Coming off a loss like that can be difficult. You really do want to yeah. be able to take a little bit of a break. And it they did. I could see when my teammates dropped a message in our Discord chat when they uh when they finished the games that Chip got a bit of a break to reset their mental, which is great. Good for them. Good. They deserve it. Everybody deserves a chance to reset their map their mental so we'll see if they were able to use that time effectively and actually come into this next set ready feeling good about it and not still beating themselves up about that old one of course these guys are experienced tournament players mm -hmm. i don't think they're going to be struggling too too much with that no. but it is something that you definitely need to be taking into account when say, you're talking about tournament gameplay as someone who is very prone to tilting uh sometimes you think you're good and then you go back in and you're not good <laughs> So it is it is very possible that, you know, that, that's going to impact play in a lot more ways than people like to let on. Right. It's, it's definitely going to change the pace of the game. But that's why I think aggro is a good. Honestly, aggro is kind of good to play when you're on tilt because you have to play a little bit faster. You have to be a little bit more like like. Yeah. yeah. But then you also got to be careful that you're not jumping the gun. Right? Exactly. Yeah. When you're a little bit tilted and you're already on a deck that wants to play fast and then you actually encounter a turn where you need to think you're like, ah, screw it rumble <laughs> he's gonna play rumble discard my hand uh, which uh yeah rumble victor is a very interesting deck um personally i think the the rumble draven victor all right it, it's great because first of all victor's got buff it makes him even better it right? makes mm -hmm. the otk potential higher but even before when you were running this type of deck a victor just is like a a second ballistic bot for you right like he can potentially get out of, get out of control get a little crazy otherwise he's just giving you a free card to discard every turn which rumble draven victor wants uh yeah. rumble draven wants I really, really like Victor as well. I, I think Rumble Draven plays very similarly to how Riven Draven or Riven Victor plays. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a newer iteration on the deck. And I like this blend of the two. I think Skathis is really onto something. Of course, Skathis is a phenomenal deck builder, has brought us the current iteration of Equazillion, has brought the current There's iteration of Feel the Mina to the to the light. The man knows how to build decks, so if no, I no. would be ripping anybody's list, it's probably this one. There's a new Equazillion running around right now? No, no, no. The one with the, that we've been seeing for the past season or two. With the oh, Voice of okay, the Risen. okay. That was Skathis. Nobody yeah, else was big brain excited. enough to actually make a Gozillion a good deck. We just okay, we'll kept listen. jamming bad cards. Now, I don't want to say no one else is big brain enough, okay? Because I definitely did recreate Lucian Nazir uh, in a pretty solid way, but no one talked about it because, like, I didn't share it because it's my secret. Um, but I'll share it with you guys now. Uh, Voice of the Risen just works in that deck right and i actually i think potentially with the azir buffs we could lucian azir might be good so all my fellow my fellow people who love that deck and want it to come back do yourselves a favor go test it out right now put voice of the risen in over uh what was her name the, the marshall Sand, marshall, marshall yeah who needs inspiring marshall your, your champions are flipping anyway lucian's flipping like a normal or uh azir's flipping like he used to so potentially that deck could be coming back pretty strong yeah actually, scouts is good 
yeah, like, you're right. It, I, I didn't even think about put, bringing that deck back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because I only think about three things, and it's the things I like. Bad decks, <laughs> content, and worse decks? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so All right. we are going to get into the deck list. Abso, I think we're going to start with Zigstalia, if you want to break that one down for us. Absolutely. Once again, this deck breakdown right brought to you guys by Runeterra AR. Great place to find decks. I personally love being able to see decks that are popping off in other countries because that's how you find some really unique meta options. Uh, Zigsalia is a very interesting deck. Again, like Monty said and I said earlier, Tempo Aggro, right? Where cards are front loaded with value. They're coming down. They're looking to do as much as possible on the turn that they're played. And then after that, they kind of just exist. So we're looking for a very faster, much uh, like semi faster paced game. Standout cards here, of course, things like Talia, right? Talia's effect on flip is nuts. She's just pretty much unblockable. Um, we have other cards like Ancient Hourglass, essentially a two mana uh, deny, right? It's what, it's what Cloak of Memories wishes that it was. Yeah. And Arsenal. Arsenal's great for a deck like this because if you happen to get to those later game turns, Arsenal will just come down and say, well, I win now. Uh, coming down with like 15 different keywords. Uh, you know, he's like Pantheon's older brother. Uh, he's very, very strong card all around. I think it's a very strong deck, and this list here it looks pretty solid, pretty standard, which is, means it's going to be effective. Yeah, I actually like that you brought up the Arsenal because it's a card I'm not the biggest fan of in this deck. It does have the potential to pop off, but you really want to be going off well before turn 8, in my opinion. You want to kind of be ending the game much sooner if you can be, and... While it can be huge, sometimes it's also just going to be a big mana sink that, that gets vengeance immediately and you don't have an hourglass to deal with it and you feel really bad about that. So I personally am playing Waste Walkers in my version of Zigstalia. Mm, and I, that's a good I one. I think that's a strong card. I also don't really like the Quicksand, but again, I'm playing more aggressively. This is playing more for a mid-range game plan, it looks like. Mm. I, don't, I can't say it's wrong to play this way. Beast Lama has taken a very similar list to rank one on the ladder right now. It's just not my preference. And then, I, uh, yeah, no, I definitely see that. Also, Herald of the Magus, another highlight yes. card if you're looking to build this deck on your own. Uh, two of Herald of the Magus. Giving Ziggs or Talia Overwhelm is just, just stupid. Just yeah. <laughs> keep that in mind. Yeah, 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 that's something I've got in my list as well. I think that's a big power card in this archetype, so I'm a little bit sad to not see it here. The right of negation makes sense in a tournament deck. I personally probably wouldn't play it on ladder because I just disrespect everything on ladder. I think that's the way you're supposed to play ladder. Um, <laughs> But in I mean, a yeah, you are masters. Yeah, well, in a tournament, you need to make your opponents respect things. Yes. You need to be able to bluff that one of. If you don't have it in your list and they know what cards are in your deck, you can't bluff it. And if you can't bluff it, it's doing you no good as a one. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, for fear side. of, yeah, I say for fear of me reigniting the open versus closed deck list on ladder <laughs> argument, let's go to our next deck list. <laughs> it is actually Siver Akshan coming up from Infinity Patrons here. And this is a pretty standard list. Sithria the Bold as the top end is something that's been played a little bit here and there. Never too common, but never like, oh, what the heck are you doing putting that in your list? Radiant Guardian, of course, a tech card. There has been some room made in this list now that Vanguard Sergeant has been nerfed. You don't need to be playing it as a three of. We can see Infinity Patrons here is only on the one copy. Wanted a little bit more resilience in the Radiant Guardian, in the Quicksands. And actually, only playing two copies of Rally, I think that's not necessarily uncommon, but usually there's one or two copies of like a, a, a Cataclysm in here sometimes. That's a card that is a bit of a substitute towards the single combat. Three Concerted Strike, though. It's very heavy on the top end removal. Yeah, um, I think that this version of Silver Auction, Silver Auction is a very flexible deck, right? Like, there's some core cards in there, but everything else can be adjusted. Ratios, numbers, all that stuff can be changed pretty freely depending on what you think you're going into. And this one definitely seems like it's geared a bit more towards some of those slower games and being able to handle the later turns of matches. Um, stuff, again, like with the extra concerted strikes, with you know less rallies, so we're not really going for those super aggressive... Uh, oh, like uh, the super aggressive mid-game turns where we're like, okay, we, we win now. You know, definitely going for that slower game plan, which I personally respect and appreciate. I love Sivir Um, I will say, I want to point out, uh, no no Hothead. I think Hothead is a slept-on card for this deck. Uh, I think the problem is that it, contests with, it contested your three-drop slot, right? Yeah. One problem is that it has two HP, which is mm. kind of negligible. There's not, if they're Mystic Shotting a, a, a Hothead here, I think you're not feeling too, too bad about that. But you're already playing Merciless Hunter, which has the same stat line. Mm -hmm. uh, the other problem is that you had Vanguard Sergeant, right? 
When yep. Vanguard Sergeant was a 3-4, it basically always free traded something. And because of that, you just there's no reason to play anything that's not Vanguard Sergeant. But uh, now, now that gone. it's been nerfed, you could now definitely see some experimentation. And I, uh, I personally find Hothead does a really, really good job of making your champless hands still feel very strong. You get him on three, he swings, you may be... All your champions have good keywords already, and the extra keywords they get are, like, ones that you'd want them to have. Like, Akshan with Challenger, you know, like crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so I do, uh, just a personal little tech card I'd throw in there. But we also have our boy Petrosite Broadwing. Such a good card. Yeah, it really is. Such a good yeah. card. And actually, I, I, I've been trying Hothead a little bit, out a little bit in some other decks. I was playing some MF Renekton, and it felt surprisingly good in that one, too. So I think you might be onto something with that one, app. So the the card is a little bit more powerful than people maybe initially gave it credit for. That plus one, plus one that comes alongside the keyword that you get is also I think that's what, really That's what impactful. makes it playable. Yeah. If it didn't have that, it would be really bad. But I think that's what makes it like, okay, this is a decent, decent tech. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with the you. three of Merciless Hunter there does... I, I don't think I've seen three of in a while. I know now that we have um, Vanguard Sergeant as a weaker card, three of makes sense. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's been a while since I've seen three of Merciless Hunter in any any sort of Shreema deck. Really? I, yeah. I've seen it very, very popular still. It's it's a most list as a three of, at least. Anything I, I build, I'm still playing it as a three of. Fearsome units are just kind of powerful, especially they when are. you target very vulnerable. True. Very true. I also haven't played much uh, here, but it looks like we have, uh, I'm getting word, ban phase is starting. So yeah, we'll hop right into that. And again, our matchup for the night is Aichi versus Skathis. And yes. the bands are up on the screen for, screen for you guys. We have spiders taken out from the side of Skathis and scouts removed from Aichi. Interesting bands there. It makes sense. Scouts is the deck list that can give the these aggro decks the most trouble. It has mm -hmm. access to challengers, whereas Irelia Azir has been historically weak to aggro. And Talia Ziggs, while being that tempo style deck, has hands that can play into the aggro, can definitely struggle as well, especially with burn heavy aggro lists like Draven Rumble Victor. Mm. Gia also can be problematic because going six wide and slamming that Yordles in arms, well, guess what? That's going to end the game is unless they have the right of negation to stop it. Are we seeing potentially? I want to look at this as your Irelia list real quick and see if we're running uh, Deny by any chance. Uh, yep, okay, that that explains the... I See, I was looking at this, I was thinking a, a Yia ban would be nice, right? But if we're keeping the Deny up in the Azir Irelia and we don't expect it to get banned because we're going into aggro, I think that not banning that makes sense because Deny just, you know, Deny the Yordles in Arms, you're good to go. I actually think no matter what ban you take, if you're Aichi in this position, you're okay. There's yeah arguments for all of them. I, ex I, I actually think, like, maybe sometimes you let the spiders through because... Well, you're playing Aurelia Azir, and that's their worst matchup, so I think you have to protect it. But uh, hmm. Rumble, also a little bit annoying. You need a way to ping off yeah. that spell shield, and that's not uh, super easy with Aurelia Azir. Yeah, for sure. I uh, I, I definitely uh, agree with that there. But I think that maybe uh, for, for Skate this, right, if we're looking at what lineups we have, Scouts was the most threatening to his lineup overall, right? Because Scouts, no spell shield doesn't matter, right? Uh, spiders dead doesn't matter. Yordles in arms, your one drop, your one one's dead doesn't matter. Uh, so I think it's very strong. I think we're going here into game one. Yes, yeah. into game one. And once again, that deck breakdown, those lovely images were brought to you by Runeterra AR. Special th shout out to them. Great website. All my decks are posted there. That's where yeah, I they're everything now. Hundred percent one of the best. Uh, their import feature is so easy. It's great if for for people like me who make content and have to just quickly import deck lists for things. It's very good. Um, looking at Tilia Ziggs versus the the Raven Drumble Raven Draven Rumble deck, the Drumble Raven. deck. Yeah, uh, you know yeah. What? This uh, this is it's some good interesting name. hands coming out from both players, right? Yeah, the very interesting hands. Um, Rock Hopper start is gonna make this ballistic bot awkward. Skate this is gonna choose not to give it up, and the now draw? just place Raven into the into the landmark actually. Yeah, I think the thing about Rockhopper and especially the Roiling Sands in general is that they are, they, as a landmark, it's incredibly threatening. Rockhopper is an insanely strong two drop. Uh, and sometimes you just go, you know what? I'm just going to do it, right? Because again, in this deck, as long as our Rumble can hit for big damage, we don't care, you know? So I think that it's like, okay, cool, I'll play the Draven. I'll do it. Doesn't matter, right? As long as I have things, I got the one axe off of them, we're good to go. And I really, really like how Aichi navigated this position. They yes. Set themselves up to delay the Ballistic Bot with the Rockhopper. 
They knew the Draven was going to come down. They have the stun ready for it. They dropped the stun. They had the three mana bank to set up these two more Roiling Sands. And now if you're Skathis, you're like, shit, can't play Rumble into this. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. What are you going to do? What an interesting decimate there. Uh, again, that makes option, sense. right? What else uh, is he going to do? I, I see it. I see the line. Uh, I, I think Skathis right now is going to try to work towards a situation where he goes, okay, you want to make me play my Rumble into a bad situation? Fine. The turn I play my Rumble is the turn I'm going to kill you with my Rumble. I think that's what we're seeing him set up by playing that Decimate so early. That's exactly what he's doing here, and I like the play from him as well. Ooh, good. That was that is also another good another good point. He had double survival skills in hands uh, in hand with the Draven. So does it really matter if he pulls? No, it doesn't. Uh, Draven's going to be doing an excellent job of taking out those Roiling Sands for the side of Skathis. The double, uh, the survival skills can definitely feel a little bit clunky, but having both Draven and Rumble there is going to make that a lot better for him. And now predict options. We could go for Preservarium. We could go for the Unraveled Earth. We could also just skip. Yeah, we could Already just skip. have a Zig, so we're probably just looking for a way to protect him at this point. And Unraveled Earth. That was taken. Maybe that was skipped. We, we can't yeah, actually we have no be idea. sure. Um, that's how, that's the fun part about predicts is like, did he, is that what he picked? I'm not sure. It's but, um, in, in that spot, it's like really hard to say, right? Like, would yeah. you pick it there? I, I've been playing I wouldn't this deck. Pick it there. I, I don't think I would pick it there either. I think no. I'd skip, but, uh, I, I could see an argument for picking it there. Yeah, for sure. I think I look at Draven Victor Rumble as a deck that has a low volume of the units, but they're all very like impactful. So I, this just no real reason to take it. Cause they're not going to be playing 50 guys every round. Um, 50 dudes every every turn. Well, that's more reason to take it, right? Because if you stop them from playing their very specific units that they want to play, you're slowing them down further and forcing them into spending all their mana on burn. Which also true. Time. But the less the, we, it also fills up your board more, right? With two landmarks that may never get blown up, and if you obliterate them, you don't get the value out of it. True. Which obliterate probably should still work the same way, but uh, it's uh, looking at this. A funny yeah, one. what do you go? What do you go for here? Like the, I mean, I think you just, do you think you just take the three? Like your health is, in in these types of matchups where you're facing into an OTK deck, your health is a resource. Oh, goes for the yeah. rumble. Okay, I think well, that changes for it. To say, uh, yeah, for I, I agree there. Um, this is a big, this is a big swing, right? Or your opponent has one blocker up. You have huge damage, uh, on this board right now. The only thing you don't have though is a way to potentially protect. Rumble, but what is Talia Zig going to run that's going to make the a rock hopper able to block him? Nothing. Quicksand. This 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 plays quicksand. Yeah. But yeah, uh, as we can see, not in the hand for the side of Aichi, and would also need a pokey stick or something, which is actually not in this list. That's something notably missing. No, mm. I will, uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. There's no pokey stick. No pokey stick. Yeah. It goes for the zigs. Uh, again, I think it's a that's a safe development. You you want zigs out. You know, Ziggs is a it, such a strong unit. Uh, his his effect, if you know the the Rumble blocks him, is gonna get rid of that spell. So I don't think he would. But also, Ziggs has a crazy big stat line, and, and now we now have an up. active Absolver too. Yes, active active Absolver. Not to mention some burn damage every single turn. Every time a landmark here pops, yeah. that's two extra damage for the side of Aichi. And but now Skathis draws into the ambush. That is a very, very scary card for that deck to have. Oh, and there's this Leah, which is leveled. That is actually, uh, I believe she's, I believe we've seen a five. I would, yes, I think that's we, a very strong play. We have three on the board, not to mention the clocking. There's four. And that's a oh, harder play survival skills. Holy cow. That is so good. That just changes the entirety of the, into the right of negation. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely, I respect it. I, I agree with the right negation there, but like, wow, what a, a, a the hard place survival skills you never see it, but it's fairly strong, especially when you're looking at this kind of board state where the Ziggs is gonna pull something. Your opponent could potentially have Absolver or a Talia in hand. They have so many landmarks, right? Like you're you don't want your cards to die off of whatever swing that they do, because if they die, you lose. But if they don't die, you win. This is 100% a win lose situation. We have a Might and an Ambush in hand, a Decimate. We're getting one damage ping every turn. Like it's crazy strong well so that was insane play yes it was unfortunately it got countered by the one of right of negation that's why i actually put it in the deck well that and for the burn you don't really expect to be denying a, 
who actually expects him to deny that? This is going to be a little crazy. I think crazy. the optimal block here is to pull the rumble with the zigs and then pull the draven with the 2-2. So that way you at least guarantee the rumble is dead. Uh, but I don't know if you can afford to is the I, thing. You kind of need the zigs to be able to win the game. Well, no, that's a lie. You have Talia. Yeah, we have Talia. We're getting our Felt of Fearsome next turn. And worst case scenario, we have a, uh, we have ourselves at Arsenal, and the Arsenal beats out Draven Rumble late game. Draven Rumble late game is garbage. Ooh, but that's a good draw. The right of, right of the arcane, or uh, right of the arcane, correct? Yeah, the same. Yes. Very strong if we get the op if we get the pass back. And looks like we're not actually nope, going to get the, the ambush. The uh, pass back here. Ambush is That is bad. And that is, all that's, on the Rumble. That's game. That's a game winning play right there. Uh, yeah, with a decimate it's... in hand, that's it. Yep. It's oh not my God. quite lethal yet he does have some hp and she does get an open attack here also no development can really come out oh you're right that is true that is true yeah uh, you, you got to play the talia i think you, you have to play the talia can you even afford to you have the right of arcane no I, you're right you can't afford it oh I don't know that you... Oh, I guess there's no... See, I really like Unleashed Energy in my Zigstalia deck because it lets yes. you pop that landmark at burst speed. I hate yeah. that card. I hate that card so much, but burst speed stuns are insane. It's so good. Absolutely that's what crazy. makes it good, And like, in that's, my opinion. Like, imagine if you had an Unleashed Energy in this spot. What if that mm -hmm. arsenal was an Unleashed Energy? You'd yeah, be laughing exactly. all your way to the bank, right? Like, exactly. That's just that's like game. Yeah, right? I don't know. You... Ah... Although, hold on, no, we do have Absolver. That is, that is, uh, that's a game winner right there. Because if we pull, oh, yeah. we pull the the Rumble with the two two, Absolver the Zigs, and that's it. Yes, right? it it can it can definitely be over here for Aichi. But what he pops? They're one HP. They're one HP. This is literally it's it's so top it deck from down. Skathis will win the game if he does not top deck the right card. Ancient Hourglass exactly. draws. It's a boom baboon. That's boom, not it. Boom baboon. That's not the line you want to see here. That I f believe is game. I think it's yeah. gonna be. I don't think there is anything from the sky side escape this that can stop this. We see no. both hands. All Aichi there, has I to do is remember to play thing. the absolver here, and they're <laughs> chilling. All right, don't forget. Just don't press OK. Right, he's taking his taking their time, so I think that means we're gonna see the absolve. Okay, I got I, I got nervous. I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was a little worried too. I was like, oh, come on, Rook, hit it. Please hit don't commit. Please don't try to win off of the landmarks. It's not worth it. I promise. Yeah, but oh, uh, what I correctly action identified. Pack. They had to go in for the kill there. Yep, that one was another one that was quite back and forth. Very good lines, very intelligent lines coming mm -hmm. up from both players. Not the kind of aggro mirror you would expect to see, but man, am I glad we did get to see it. Yeah, it was absolutely wild. Just um, like just very a lot of very good highlight moments that are going to stand out as like this was the play that was going to change the game. And then, oh, no, it's not anymore. Like that's the beauty of card games, and competitive card games is watching all these crazy things happen on screen. We're like this is just that constant back and forth is what I love and what I live to see. I thought Skathis was so doomed with that opening. I did too. And he made it such a real contest. But that's he, enough about oh, that wild. last game because we have another one on deck here. And it's a really Same Azir deck. up against the Draven Rumble. And it, yep. we touched on this during the deck phase. This Draven Rumble list has Spell Shield available to it. So yes. Aichi is going to have a very difficult time resetting this Rumble, which is what they want to do. Also, looking at our opening hands... That Draven Rumble opener is really, really strong into this matchup. Yes, it is. It's exactly what you want to see if you're Skate this. Unfortunately, you don't have the token on too. That's nope. okay though. It's uh sometimes just gonna be that way. And I think I would have liked to see Skate this attack there. Yeah, the I definitely agree. Aurelia, you wanna be getting the Aurelia as your player to block when you can, so mm -hmm. that way they're trading on defense. This is like super minuscule, but if you can slow down the Aurelia by even one turn by getting them to walk, you're doing yourself a huge favor. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, since the since the nerfs to the deck, uh, Aurelia's ear became um, le way less 
powerful at recovering from bad situations. Yes. Uh, the deck is very much like a traditional combo deck now, where like if the combo goes off, you're good. If it doesn't, then you lose. Um, and so you definitely want to be pushing that aggro, especially with a deck like Draven Rumble Victor, where you know you're going to OTK your opponent. So you have the freedom to take these swings, these riskier swings, knowing that they have a lower probability they're going to block. It's like, well, my health's just a resource anyway. Right? It's not going to matter anyway. Um, and sometimes that can win you the game. Like if you don't draw your options, you draw your burn, that'll win you the game. Definitely can. And Skathis had the option to come in and axe there, decided not to. Is going to be able to just play out a Victor next turn if he so chooses. Start counting, setting that up, developing its keywords and its attack. Double Ancient Prep into what could be like the perfect hand fix, right? Because we have, we have both the champions we want now. Very, very strong uh, predict options there. And that's really the highlight of Prince's mechanic is, is how good it is at hand fixing for you. But man, Skathis' hand is wild. In, okay, so this open attack tells me that Aichi wants to play the Field Musician this turn. Most likely. I think Aichi wants to get all of his engine piece. Or for the Azir, okay. So it seems like he wants to get all his engine pieces set up and then go for a big blowout turn. Okay, but okay. Actually, here's, here's the real reason that open attack came through. It was playing around Rumble. If the Rumble gets in mm -hmm. with an axe there, that's halfway to level up condition. And then one attack from the Rumble is... Uh, is a is a is a is a leveled rumble and that's then true. starts generating mecha yordles and that's very very scary yeah mecha free free blockers with big hit points is not what Wait. you want to see for your opponent skate this is a god yes absolutely that's what i th okay so this is actually the i've always said is that victor players don't swing with victor enough um and like thank you skate this just thank you that's all i say is thank you for this he also because hit that is a, yeah he did which is insane yeah. Um, very very big but yeah this is a great swing here this is a lot of damage like what do you do i mean you could potentially yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he plays the ambush here for sure yep yeah. yep and this yeah, is actually just bad uh, very bad for your opponent you can commit a lot of damage here yeah want. there's no fearsome blocker either so you are just taking you can use both axes yep now we're cooking. i i think you definitely do. Yeah, oh, interesting. You... Goes for the goes for the one of Victor. I would have considered using them just on Draven for the level up because, you know, the two axes off every swing feels really strong for this deck. It does. It does. It does. Also, giving Draven overwhelm can be yeah. valuable. But uh, Draven is able to level up very quickly in this deck against Irelia's mm. here, particularly because you can just slam both axes, right? Very true. So very true. You can level up on a defensive turn when they choose to, if, they, if, if he likes. Also, keeping an axe up for survival skills can be quite important now this turn though is going to be very scary granted you know caster vision is, is helping me see the fear uh the fear of god but like this is a very powerful turn for aichi we have field musicians out we have sparring student we have two irelias in hand um plenty of ways to just make sure that we're they're consistently getting all these swings in with all of our units like this is a very going to be a very dominant and potentially game-changing turn Yes, it certainly is. The Blade Dance is going to be able to come out here. The Spellman is going to get refilled off of that. Azir is going to level up, and Relia does not look like she's close, but she might get there anyways. And here's another Survival Bro. Skills hard cast. No Bro. deny available to Aichi this time. And the Victor <laughs> hit Scout, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, that's huge. So... Oh, that changes so much everything. going on in this game. We didn't even get to talk about that. This changes everything, because you can't like, now, uh, Aichi's entire turn is pretty much invalidated. No matter how much damage you do, it's not going to be enough, and your deck doesn't run pain. Ah, it might be just enough, to be honest. I'm looking at this board, and I'm thinking that it might be just Ooh, no, enough. You're, you know what? That's that's a, that's a good With point. With the recall? It, yeah. It might get With the there. recall. The problem is that... Have to, we can't recall the Aurelia to get like a, a third blade dance. No. If we had a little bit more mana, it'd be a really hype line. But I think you have to recall the two two or the two uh, probably the two one, just just in case. Doesn't... Okay, raw with the is the Aurelia closer leveling up than I thought? Uh, what are we doing? Oh here? no, we're gonna go for the recall on that, most likely. Mm, I think we could have leveled no. up the Aurelia this turn. Maybe I. She levels up at, what, 13 attackers now? 13, I believe, yes. And we had three there. We had two earlier, two earlier, so that's four, seven. I think we could have leveled her with the Blade Dance and a full swing. Yeah. Uh, I, 
interesting choice of an axe there. Are we at 10 cards? No, that's just an interesting axe. We could Maybe have... it just doesn't want to have it. Maybe. Interesting. That was a, definitely an interesting turn, but... Another ambush. ambush. And, that uh... Ambush literally just his game. Yeah. Yeah, Skathis ties it up, put, gives us a series once again. Yup. And that's the power of these blowout decks, man. These, like, the, the, especially with the new up... Like, the, the change to zero mana on that spell did a lot for Victor. The upgraded so Victor... Oh, impact was insane i mean also like i you're passionate spent, about this right? yeah we're i spent both, a long time passionate about victor we, i spent we, a we, long time studying why victor is bad only to have it not matter anymore because he's good literally <laughs> the day you put out the video i don't want to talk about it riot nerfed me bro no bro they did you a solid they they showed that you were correct That's they true, showed though. that That's your analysis true. was perfect but uh we are gonna get into game three here Yep. And it is that it is Fizz Lulu up against yes, Aurelia Azir. Arms, yeah, but that Aurelia Azir hand, that opener is crazy strong. Yeah. Skathis also has the cards he's going to want to be seeing in this matchup. Yeah. The Yordle Captain there, even if they deny found though. So oh, I, I, I was a little bit surprised to see Skathis actually keep the Yordles in arms in deny matchups. You usually mm -hmm. kick it. Maybe wasn't uh i know sometimes when i'm playing in tournaments i know the deck list but i'm thinking it's like a more standard deck list and deny mm -hmm. not completely totally standard in aurelia zero true so yeah. maybe just wasn't maybe it was on a little bit of autopilot and didn't consider it, it also there. That's another could be is. just that because it's a two of uh in the deck that you keep the one in the event you draw the second one like that so it, that way it feels a little bit like you want to make sure you have two at all two in case you want to use it right so that way you're yeah. guaranteed to get it a little bit more potentially but, kind of um, it's it's like reasonable but you're also burning five mana to yeah. burn four right it's true it's true 100 true um in the event so, they have it yeah good so yeah flame chompers is so so good it is it's crazy. so so good it's so yeah i mean emperor's day is set up with a field conditions in hand is nothing to laugh at uh that's all it takes is one two days actually i just realized we have a second one yeah, all it takes I... is, is one solid unit that can get a swing in and you're going crazy I don't even know if IG can actually afford to play the Deus or the Field Musicians no, here. They not. might just have to develop the, the the one drop. I think you develop the one drop, um, and then you could swing I with it. You, I think you're right. For yeah, I was gonna say game, actually. Oh, it goes for the Deus oh. instead. Now, now, Monty, if if you're in IG shoot, are you writing with for the mana gem or for the unit? Well, I'm, now I'm not doing it. If if I was going to take the right line, I would have played the one drop. I would have right, used right from the mana gem. And then I would have played my Azir because I'm a high roller. And then I'm attacking with everything anyways because I don't care mm. at this point. I need yeah, to start I, leveling I up my line. champions. And we have two days on the board. We're going to draw into a third champion. We also have the field musicians. I don't know. And yeah, I think here I'm probably just burning. I'm saving my 2-1 because I don't want to take infinite damage. Yeah, so I, I, that is something I agree with. Stance. I can't say I agree with the way this game has been played. Oh, but goes for the twin. Goes for the twin. That's a. It's not to say bad. It just it does feel bad because it's not a one drop, right? Twin is an incredibly powerful card. Even post nerf, it's just not as good for trading anymore. Um, it's still a very strong defensive card, right? Giving your giving your uh, unit basically a get excited's worth of health is really good. Oh, so yeah, that it's three two fizz. Awesome. It's still a great card, but. Is it better than Awaking? It is better than Awaking Sands, right? So. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's a bit odd for me to see that trade. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking of the Waking Sands potentially as like a okay, he's gonna he's gonna you know use a Yaya. I'll Waking Sands for a good blocker, mm -hmm. right? As we just saw them do, and uh, I respect the not snap deny. I mean, I don't know if they had the mana to snap deny, but if they did, I don't think they would have. I felt like that was a, a that's this is a safe Yaya to not deny, right? Like you're not gonna die off of it. You're good to go. Well, they um, had uh, they'd already played the field musicians, which is probably the only reason Skathis ended up playing the yeah yeah there. Otherwise, I think mm. you're going for bomber twins into uh, a mecha mm. yordle. There's the Azir. Uh, probably want to see the Irelia, but you know, at this point you do. But that's exactly what that's you want to see. That's good. Yeah, that's really strong. Blossoming Blade is a very very powerful unit. This uh, is still not... okay as well because you can attack in and you're gonna flip this you're gonna get your field musicians off and a serious yeah. flip as well yeah although this azir is probably going to die off of this swing even if he does flip right you block with the four three um doesn't trade for the four three and then 
Wheel Mystic Doctor shot. To summon, maybe? No. But he draws oh, another one! Top deck. <laughs> what an insane wow. top deck. Good players draw good. That's what yeah, it is. Good players draw the cards they need when they need them. And they're is... gonna go to three, can go to four if the block comes out and it's necessary. But uh Skate is not even gonna mess with it. Yeah, ultimately I uh, I definitely actually I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know if I agree with that. I think I think you do want to block into that Azir with the four two and then just like mystic shot it away. Unless you're saving your burn for lethal. I think you don't want to risk your units dying so that way you can just stay wider and swing. Mm, that's a good point. That's a very and true point. I might even just discard Dep well, depending on what we hit there, I might have. Uh, it was a rockfall path that they discarded. I, I meant I was going to say I might consider discarding the second Yordles in Arms because mm. I just assume that it's never going to get cast. Yeah, right. But, At this uh, point in the game, oh, it's never getting cast. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. to say, this oh, point in the game, there's much mana now. This is but... casting it. Okay. No. Wait, maybe not. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Open Which attack. The swing. Okay, I like the open attack. Nope. Nope. Not going for the swing. Going back. Keeping us on our toes as casters. He's goes for playing it. mind games with us. Goes for it. I, I, I respect the commitment. It's probably not going to go through. But even if it doesn't go through, we burn a deny. Um, we burn I mean, four mana, which we're, which we're actually dead now though, right? Um, are we? We um, we if block? so. Let's... Oh yeah, yeah. No, you are dead there. I think. I believe. Yeah, I think so. I, let's let's pretend we played this turn differently and we used the scrap peep and we got rid of the Yoros in arms. Yep. We're threatening to push five damage off of the scrap dash yep. and the fizz alone. And then four more off the outside. That's nine damage. Even if the homecoming block comes off, we're then. We have answers in hand for. We're uh, pushing three to damage. Anyway, so. And we had five, six. We're, we're one off lethal if the homecoming block comes out, which is probably why Skate has decided to go for that Yordles in Arms there. Mm. I am still not sure I agree with the line. Yeah, I, I, I agree with it from a sense of like if from Skate if I'm in if Skate's headspace is about winning the game as fast as possible and like making sure that when I go for lethal it's lethal so I don't die, then I could see that right. You don't want to play that game where like oh he's one off lethal I have to top deck the card that's gonna win me the game, um. So I can understand that, but we don't necessarily die here. We are going down to what's that seven eight nine two health. Yeah. We're dead to health, right? This is this yes, is still, and we're losing our attackers, so we're no longer threatening, and the board state just got worse for us. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe slight lapse in judgment from the side of Skate. This probably should have gone, for, probably should have played around the deny, but uh, all right, let's see if uh, must have had a read that it wasn't in the hand. Okay, goes for the pokey stick, gonna make our fizz and elusive, so he's at least gonna punch through and the on the top deck. Hmm. Going in next turn with that get excited with what? What is that? So we're getting impact damage off for two. Um, mm -hmm. And then that makes the get excited with the mystic shots. I believe that makes it lethal. If we get, if we have, what's that? We need to have, yeah, I think that, I think that's lethal. Yes. That is wild. Wow. Doesn't even need it. So uh, for those who were who were interested in how Ryan F and Miles might be doing in this tournament in his first sh LOR showing. He has been o 2 would by maybe next time. Oof. The Absolver That's... is going to be huge here. Doesn't. I don't think it matters, though. No, I mean, doesn't. this is 100%. I, she's got to be feeling that feeling some sting right now from this loss. This is definitely yes. not a loss you're happy to take. Uh, those burden defeats. Wait. Wait a minute. Mystic shot, we're good. Mystic shot, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Mystic shot, we're good. It was, I it was, was like, hold on. close. <laughs> so only two denies in the deck, no nopify. Yep, there is. There's the feels bad. Uh, yep. If there, yeah, I was gonna say, if there was nopify, that'd be pretty, pretty insane. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Absolver off the top two. This is why yeah. you don't need the absolver in your deck. We, uh, yeah, we to tell him. We, we yeah. made this commentary the last time. Arcodius, I know, would be rolling in his grave right now. Assuming he was dead, he's not. Dark Cody's is still alive. The way the way that I say this, the way that I look at it is, why do you need Absolver when you have Irelia spell? Right. It's it's essentially the same thing. Right. And and also you're six wide all the time, so like yeah, like. But you know, ultimately that was still a down of the wire game. But that is going to be Skathis taking the W over. I'm so bad at names. Aichi. Aichi, thank you. Aichi the Red Panda. Yeah, that was that was a really good set.
it was yet another nail biter. I think every single game that we've seen today has been super, super back and forth. This always seems to be the case when you and I end up casting yeah. together. But I'm <laughs> so is. here for it. I'm so honestly, here yeah, for keep it. it up. It's good for everyone, the spectators, for us. Although it's not good for my heart, I can't take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow, just really good gameplay. Uh, Aurelia Azir coming back is something I'm actually very happy about. I'm not a huge fan of the deck. I, I have played it a lot. I think because of how good it was, it's like one of my most played champions is uh, Irelia and Azir. But um, uh, it's nice that it's coming back in a more balanced place where it's healthier for the meta. Because it is a fun yeah. deck. I really enjoyed the deck as well. I put a lot of time into it. Of course, Darkotis being my teammate. Uh, <laughs> I, I was under the tutelage of the Irelia Azir master. Yeah, right. I, I spent time, I learned. Minasia as well, another very notable Irelia Azir player. I had to learn the deck from him. <laughs> I, I popped off with it in the seasonals. All it went seven two, just didn't have the ladder blessing. So I too am happy that it's making a resurgence. I look forward to playing it on ladder again. Maybe I'll bring it in my tournament lineups going forward. Maybe I'll include it in. Some it is pretty lineups. good. It is pretty good. It's, it's, nice I, uh, that it's playable. I'm still trying to figure out what my lineup's going to be. Although I have been playing a lot of TF Ezreal lately. Uh, I saw Ooh, someone Debo someone has front been on that. Yeah, I think it was if Debo on front page the leaderboard with it. And I was like, oh, interesting. And I've just accepted at this point, as much as I don't like Ezreal in League, he's got to be, he's one of my favorite cards in this game. Like, he's just, he's got such a fun and engaging flip effect that I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, it really does. And for people who might be wondering about some of the other sets from some of the other teams that went on today, uh, OMG in Group 4 lost to Breaking Vandal earlier today, but beat Bo. All right. We saw my own team, WWW, Worldwide Wombats, mm -hmm. go... Two to one against Chip, but then we are currently one one against uh, against BG, and we have rescheduled our third match. I know that Wombats after Dark went three zero against NA Farmers, but then went zero three against Puffcat Peddlers. So okay, been a very very exciting. Night. Yeah, these uh, I'm just I'm just looking at the the. The uh, results and it seems very even kind of like no i don't see anything that's like too much of a wipeout not not too many games that are complete like washes yeah it's it's been it's always like very very back and forth sets i think it has to do with the way the pick band the pick phase works right mm -hmm. with this tournament we you pick your you one team gets first pick the other team gets uh, the other team gets sec gets to pick two second pick, but gets to pick two matchups instead as okay. a compensation. So, due to that, you're often going to see one team specifically target a certain matchup here, mm -hmm. so that way they can do they can get the best matchup possible for a deck for a lineup that might not be as safe into the other two. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, right? Because when you look at your when you're picking your tournament lineup and you're doing bans in tournament, you're always just banning. It's Sometimes you ban the deck that is the best against your lineup. Sometimes you ban the deck that just is the best against you as a person. Like, uh, I have a couple, I've had a couple decks in the past that I will ban even if it's not that good for me to, like, you know, have them in. I'll just spec for whatever the broken stuff is. Um, like, uh, like Plunder. Plunder just tilts me, so I always will ban Plunder in a tournament. Don't ever play Plunder in a tournament. I'll find you. Uh, <laughs> I know, thank God it's not good anymore. But uh, yeah, and that makes sense that you'd have that secondary layer of targeting with your uh, with your bands, right? Or potentially targeting with your lineups. Yeah, it's it's really cool. It's one of the things that I like the most about this uh, about this tournament. It's really really exciting to be able to build these lineups together with your teammates and try and think. Mm. Okay, well, I'm limited. I can only bring these two decks, these two region combos twice. My mm. third player has to do something else it really adds a different dynamic to the team aspect of the game. And it's, it really changes the way card games are played. And I really, really enjoy being here and participating in this tournament. And I can't yeah, wait to actually really play agree. next week. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I, I do agree. This is very, it's very cool to see these sort of like a uh, team based events because in, in fighting games, which is where I come from, I originate, um, you have like crew battles where you have, you know, 10 players and they play and they do a similar thing where you send a player up and they stay on until they lose, right? And so you have this similar level of mind games. Okay, well, this character into this character. And it's it's cool to see that in card games as well, that element. It's always one of the most hype formats to watch is these ones where it's all these extra layers of thinking that happen. And as casters, it gives us so much more to talk about. It really does. It's It's been an absolute 
fantastic set of back and forths here. So. We are looking to see if we can get into Donut Bazooka versus Infinity Patrons. We don't know the score right now. We, they may just be finishing up. We're hoping to get into the game for you guys, though. It'll, and unfortunately, there won't be any second hand, so it's just the way it is. That's okay. Uh, but to remind everybody who may have just may just be tuning in or may have missed it, we are watching Chip versus Zen uh, Zenitz. Oh my! Enigma Stromboli. Enigma Stromboli. I couldn't watch too much Demon part. Slayer. That I heard that <laughs> Zenitsu almost slipped yeah. out. <laughs> I have been. I have been. My roommates and I have been on a bit of a binge, but. Uh, we did see Skathis end up taking a 2-1 to one set against Aichi. We know maybe next time went 2-0 against his opponent, who was Ryan F. and Miles, the newcomer, who was very that's, hyped up. That's right, that's right, that's right. Placement, the Prince's replacement has been hyped up. At, went and down got o -2. knocked down. And then... In a second, we'll hopefully be able to give you an update on the Donut Bazooka yes. versus Infinity uh, Patrons. Match. Looking at lineups here, um, Infinity Patrons is running Darkness, Aphelios, Vi, Zoe, and Akshan Sivir into Donut Bazooka's uh, Zero Irelia, Fizz, Ken, and Yumi, Yorls in Arms. Not actually a cool deck. And um, Ari Lulu. Ari Lulu is a very cool deck, though. And it looks like it's a 2 0 Infinity Patrons. Yeah. Well, so that's a clean sweep from yep. Chip. We were saying how there weren't too many clean sweeps in this in this first week yet, but uh, apparently that's being changed as we talk, yeah. as we as we uh, is... mention it. You ruined it. Commentator's curse. <laughs> Y'all look like I do this stuff on purpose. I say things I know that I I, I don't want to have happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, would it be crazy if this was a washout? So I'll say it's not going to be. That's how it works. So, uh. I guess we don't have any more matches for you guys tonight, unfortunately. No, I was don't. hoping to get one or two more. Uh, but, uh, well, Monty, actually, that's a bit of, of a surprise for you because what you don't realize is that uh, Aegis has actually flown me out. Our final match is going to be me versus you, but in real life, I hope okay. you brought the gloves. That's why I put the word square up on my card. Okay. Um, so I'm coming. I'm, I'm, they're, I'm, yeah, I'm coming into your house right now. I'm knocking on the door. You can... Right. You can... Door. Nobody's at the door. Okay, well, I, I I knocked on my end, and you were supposed to act like it. You heard it on your end, so that way the bit would continue, and then they were gonna like it's continuing. Just they were gonna pan here. out. You're not here yet. No, but like the bit's ruined now because I knocked. Did you not hear the? Did you not hear me knock? Did you not I hear that? Did. I oh, now, see, I ruined it. Now I'm the bad one. <laughs> Monty, go to the door now, quick. <laughs> oh oh man. man. I think it's always uh, so fun. It's yeah, it's always a blast casting with you, Ab. So I have a great time. Thank you for joining Thanks. me tonight. You as well, man. You as well. Uh, thank you for thank you for thank you getting me in doing. here, man. Well, my pleasure, bro. It's I thank you to Red and Hirsch and Agus for allowing Absolutely. us to be here. Yes, they're honestly the goats. They are probably the best thing to happen to Legends of Runeterra since the game's launch. It's so that I I will uh, I will say that is definitely one of them. Uh, probably second only to myself. So, yeah, I mean, your Thanks game show agreeing. is also pretty hype. Your game show is really, really hype. No, I just meant like me in general. Like oh, the fact okay. that I was born. Ah, well, that's it's a little egotistical. Yeah. Well, what? What? Do you? Did you read the card that I made for myself that says like it has all this ridiculous nonsense on it? Yeah, mine just says. <laughs> you made like a nice normal one. I was like, I'm gonna put five paragraphs of text so they can't put my face anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> man <laughs> okay well we'll uh we you may want to work on that for the next appearance app so you're right i gotta, gotta go for six paragraphs of text six paragraphs more. Text. make it harder for them <laughs> exactly gonna have more density well i think Ugh. with that we should probably wrap it up no more games our four casters here i mean our poor <laughs> producer probably wants to get home and have some dinner or she's tired i'm sure <laughs> So, thank you guys so, so much for coming yes. out to the first week of the Aegis, Aegis uh, Legends of Ruterra Tournament Amateur League. And I, uh, uh, 
calling it an amateur league feels so weird to be honest it's it, it, it is what it is these are that elites. is what it is like it's, it's not a misnomer whatsoever it's just, just, this is the minor leagues how's i think minor league is a bit better it's a bit okay. less offensive I it's like they're still offensive. good it's just a it's just a term no Thank you to All everybody right. who came yes, out tonight. Thank you. Once again, uh, special thanks to Ritter AR for providing us with some off it, uh, awesome deck graphics so we could break down those decks for you all. Congrats to Chip for taking down Z Enigma Stromboli in that second set. And congrats to who won our first set? Bo. Bo won yeah, our first Bo. set. That was yes. also a wonderful set. Congrats to them for their for their first win in the first week of the of the Aegis. <laughs> of the Aegis Minor League. I'm Monte Cristo. I'm clearly tongue-tied. I'm going to stop talking. Thank you I'm all Absolution. for being here and tuning out. And because I'm here, you know how we send it off. As always, have yourselves a Hoover damn good one. Good night, guys. Thank you for joining us. I hope to see you back next week. Uh, I hope to see you here tomorrow for EMEA and their first broadcast. Huge shout-outs once again to the guys at Runeterra Academy, now Aegis Esports for putting on such a wonderful tournament for us and making our scene such a better I place. Fortnite dance, right? Supposed to like, supposed to like dance it out. So we were, I was, what I got told, I told there was a lot of five year olds watching tonight. So I got to put that to dance for him. I'll dance. I'll dance with you, bro. <laughs> Jam out. Hirsch, can we get some music? Is he some music so we're not dancing like idiots? Please, God. You, I look like a fool right now. He's just he's abusing. He's abusing us. He's trolling. He's trolling at this point. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> Come on, Hirsch. I can't see tormented like this any longer. <laughs> He's trying to make us suffer. Oh, boy. Well, I think that's going to be it from us tonight. Yeah.